Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> this is like terrifying when you press that button and it's like, whoa. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Let's see if everything's working okay. There's a, I think that one person in here, that might be me. I'm not really sure. Do do do. Hope somebody can hear me. Oh, cool, Chief. Can is my sound okay? Yeah. Hello, hey Chuck. I, I noticed some people were on uh, posting stuff on my YouTube. I thought, oh, thank you, Chief. I was hoping I could maybe just like chat with you guys. Uh, it gets a little tedious, like writing responses. I want to do a. Uh, I wanted to write a lot more, but I was just, uh, yeah, I was on my phone earlier and I was just like, oh man, I can't be bothered. I hate, I hate typing on my phone. It's just so, it's so annoying. So if, uh, if you guys got some questions, I was actually thinking, I got a, I got a little list of topics here, um, but I'm sure somebody's got a question. <laughs> now, Chief, feel, feel free to bother me. That's what I'm here for, man. I was going to make some cakes. I was going to mix substrate with spawn, you know, but I've been working with the babies all day, to be honest, and I'm a little bit burned out. I don't mind talking about them, but uh, hi, Andy. I, uh, I, to be honest, my hands are a little bit tired. I was doing a bunch of manual labor for the last couple of days, and my, I feel like I got freaking arthritis because you know, I squeeze my, squeeze my substrate hand handful at a time. Uh, Larry, the you mean blue meanies? You mean paniolis or cubes? There is. Unfortunately, there's been a, a variety or a strain or whatever of cubes named Blue Meanies. They're just a standard cube. Um, but if you mean Blue Meanies in Australia and uh, and I think in the UK, Blue, Blue Meanies to Australians mean Paniolas. Blue Meanies to sometimes to people from the UK or Europe mean Liberty Caps, uh, the Semilanciata. So I don't know exactly what you mean by, by Blue Meanies. Larry. It's a little bit of a confusing. Unfortunately, I really, really wish somebody decided to give a cube strain the name Blue Meanies, which was already kind of reserved uh, for Paniolis uh, cyanescence. And then somebody had the bright idea for marketing, basically, which which it clearly was a, a good move. If you don't care about taxonomy and nomenclature, it was a, a great move because now they have the Blue Meanies. I would call it a collagen or a race or a strain or whatever. I don't want to get into the logistics about what to call it exactly, but um, chief, do, 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 uh, Lawson, what's up, you guys? What's your opinion on using a microwave? Uh, Lawson, I've actually used a microwave for substrate sterilization quite a few times. Uh, the only, the main problem is it's, it's just, uh, the size. My microwave's only, you know, size of a dinner plate. Uh, I've used, a, I've used a microwave plenty of times for, if you've got leftover substrate, um, what you can do is actually put it in a bag. Like I make mine in big pots. And if you just got maybe a little bit leftover, put it into a, a plastic bag and you can freeze it. And then it like treat it like, I don't know, like mashed potatoes or whatever you know like i don't know mashed potatoes would be very good after you froze them but uh yeah you can freeze substrate you can uh, uh, microwave it just it's you know just like you would for food and it works really well actually especially if you're doing smaller grows like i used to grow in these little deli containers you know like leftover food containers that were quite clean or I'd buy new ones um yeah it works great you can just make sure it's cooled down before you mix in your spawn you know don't don't go mix in like hot ass microwave substrate with your, you know, your, your living spawn, that would be a bad idea. So make sure you cool it down before you mix it. But yeah, it works great. I've done it a bunch of times, especially for smaller grows. Um, also, if you got poo in your substrate, you know, you might want to like ask your wife before you start, you know, throwing shitty substrate in the microwave. She might not like that or your girl or your partner or whatever. They might, they might not like that too much if you throw on pan sub. Oh, in the microwave, it's probably not going to be so nice for the next person that uses that microwave. Ah, man, I threw away some pants up yesterday. It was stinking up my kitchen, and I just tossed it. 
Uh, I used it for some of my, I mixed it with some spawn, but by the time I, I had a little left over and it was sitting in the pan and like after about three or four days, I opened the pan and it was like, whoa, it, it started fermenting or whatever it was doing and it was not pleasant. Uh, yeah, the uh, do -do pipeline Salvatore. Uh, what I do is I literally, I have a big pan and I throw my coir and my vermiculite in there and I just put like covered up with that much water and I literally just boil it like you're making pasta. Um, and then uh, try to keep the water like, you know, not super excessive. But the thing why I boil substrate is because sometimes the choir is at too high sodium, the, the EC, they call it the electroconductivity. So if you put an excess of water, it'll kind of wash off your choir. And then I just scoop it out like handful by handful. And then I squeeze it to fuel capacity. It works great. Uh, again, make sure it's not too hot. Because, uh, you know, if you boil like a huge pan of water with your sub, you're going to have let it cool down for you know, probably at least 12 hours. So just keep it covered up. And then when you're ready to use it, it could be two days, three days later. If it doesn't have poo in it, the poo seems to be a little more time sensitive. But my my CV, my choir vermiculite, I'll boil it and I might not use it for two or three days. In fact, I still, I have two big, huge pots. They, they call them like Indian pots here. They're like curry pots. Um, I've got two of them sitting in my kitchen right now that I was going to use. And then I was like, yeah, maybe I'll try to help some of you guys out here. Hello, Colin. I forgot, I forgot where you're from, your name. I know. I, I'm too many discords and stuff, you guys. I can't remember where y'all are from. Um, yeah, the name, Chief. The name is just for marketing. It was a kind of really underhanded, a bit mischievous uh, idea to name a cube strain Blue Meanies. So the Blue Meanies that people probably are referring to now, at least in America, are probably just the normal Cubensis. So they're the same temperatures as normal Cubensis. Blue minis that are from the tropics, like, you know, subtropical Australia and, and on this kind of side of the world. They, I don't know, I'm not real familiar with pans, to be honest. You can go, you know, ask Gordo Tech or whatever people do these days. There's a bunch of stuff about pans. I'm just starting on the pans now and I'm not, I'm not really so certain I want to get too into it after talking to a lot of people. Um, Boston, she just found it. <clears throat> yeah, lost in that cheap there. Yeah, but, but boiling water works great. It, again, it's a way to get rid of some of the sodium. And it's, it, you know, it's it's not probably sterilized, but it's a lot, lot closer. I was having trouble with trick for years. And again, the choir um, quality here changes all the time. So you have to kind of eyeball it. Like you might need to put a little more vermiculite in there. Um, you know, give it a squeeze, just like farmers do, you know, squeeze your dirt. And you'll get used to you'll get used to what the fuel capacity should be um, before you mix it with your spawn. So do, 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 do. I got cocoa substrate. Yeah, I mean the bucket tech is great if you've got a 650 gram block of cocoa bliss coir, and you've got a certain kind of vermiculite, and you've got a certain kind of tap water. You know, tap water changes the ion contents, and, and tap water, you know, you may have to mess around with that. Strangely enough, I've had trouble with agar uh, recipes. And, and if you use tap water in different locations, I've grown in like 10, 15 different locations. The tap water varies quite a bit. So if you're worried about agar and tap water, use, um, you know, distilled water, uh, drinking water. But um, for 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 um, substrate or quark, you know, CB substrate, I wouldn't worry about the tap water. Just use it. It'll be fine. It's more of like also the choir is a, it's kind of dirty. The stuff I get it, it's just they had to. It just varies from month to month, season to season, um, which is makes more sense because I live in the country where it's probably produced. So it's kind of like they keep the cheap, like local stuff for the people here, and they export the higher quality stuff because you know you're gonna pay a lot more for it. Uh, you know, and I have a dedicated microwave for sub. Yeah, it works great. Like I said, if you as long as your your partner or your roommates don't mind, <laughs> it's all good. Oh, corner yes, Scotland. That's right. Um, I would ask how you got the name Corner, but I'm a little scared. <laughs> I know I've seen you on a bunch of other different stuff, various places. I use microwave agar and LC. Yeah, I I've, I've used in a pinch. You can like yeah, you can make agar in the in the microwave too. I always just had trouble with it boiling over. 
you got to be really careful, you know, cleaning up like hot agar from your microwave. It's just a mess. So like be really careful. It doesn't like shoot up the PC I've been using. Uh, it's, it's on a timer that it's actually an autoclave and I don't know why my, my recipe is too thick and it's been boiling over. So I've been cleaning up, uh, semi gelled agar from the inside of this autoclave. It's freaking nasty. But yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I wouldn't get in a habit like of using the microwave for agar, but in a pinch, I think it works pretty well. Um. But it probably depends exactly how you do it. And I mean, if you're covering it up, you know, if you put your liquid culture in a media jar and then you microwave it, it's going to build up pressure. So it's kind of like going to be an in situ like autoclave, basically. Um, that would probably work really well. But again, you know, do you want like a media bottle blowing up in your microwave? I've blown up eggs in microwaves, you know, eggs that were whole eggs. And that wasn't very fun either. So I guess it. But yeah, I imagine for agar, it would probably work quite well. We used to do it all the time in microbiology, but we weren't keeping our cultures for months. You know, I've got I've got uh, mushroom cultures that have been sitting around for six months, and I, I don't know if I'd be real, like, certain about using the microwave. Um, unless you had really, really clean agar and uh, clean malt extract or sugar. I mean, if you're using corn syrup or some, like, super... Um, super purified like microbiological media i'm sure it'd be fine but yeah i don't i don't know if i count on it for like months of storage i mean like i wouldn't keep the plates forever but if you're just subbing and trying to get stuff to you know to inoculate you know quart jars it's probably fine um she's covered in boiled water let's see Yeah, the, the boiling thing, um, I don't know. Again, it goes back to how much contamination you're really willing to accept. I would prefer not to have any, but, you know, they, I mean, even with my boiled substrate, you're doing it in open air, um, you know, depending on the time of the day. My kitchen is pretty much like, kind of, it's kind of open. And so, you know, maybe the neighbors would like, you know, sweep, swept the floor, you know, before I walked in there and there's maybe shit floating around you know all up in the air um, but yeah i like to go like on the safe side i don't know a lot of people tend to like want to do things as like like the ghetto method and like as easily as possible i tend to go the other way because I, I don't like throwing away stuff especially when i've done all this hard work like throwing away tricked out like substrate is really really painful for me even though i've done it so 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 many times but <laughs> so so yeah again i don't know you know there's like little hacks or whatever for everything but I, if you have a pc i would use it as much as you can <laughs> corner that that main frames oh not dead people okay corner. <laughs> i have never actually seen a dead body i've seen lots of dead animals and fish and things like that but not, i don't think i've ever seen an actual dead body Oh yeah, man. I had, <clears throat> chief. I had yeah. I had two eggs. I was trying to make hard boiled eggs or soft boiled eggs, and oh my god, the one of them blew up, and it it was like a chain reaction. That like the other two, there are three that were in there, like blew up, and then all of a sudden I was sitting in like I was in a small room in the microwave. The door flew open, and all these like scrambled egg bits like flew out at me, as well as some chunks of glass. I had it in like a little glass bowl. I thought, oh, a glass bowl with open top, it'll be okay. No, that didn't work either. <laughs> do 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 BNAs, thank you guys. I'm glad somebody's here. I, I think this might actually be an okay time because it's probably the morning for some of y'all. Some of you guys work second shift. I used to work second and third shift. You know, not everybody's got like a nine to five. You know, some or maybe you don't have a job. Or maybe your job is growing cubes. <laughs> maybe not a nice job as long as it well, maybe not all the prices gone way down, right? These ketchups up some and see more actual food. Can you? Um, yeah, R R J R L J C W. Um, I mean, whatever works. Yeah, you get a lot of in in vitro fruits. They call them which in vitro means glass, but you call them, I guess, in plastico. <laughs> They'll fruit like a lot of things. It's it's kind of a nice sign because you know that's a fruiting um, dicarion that you have. Um, specific nutrient now. Nah, any carbohydrate. Change up your recipe once in a while. There's hundreds of. Agar recipes. 
um, you can use uh, rice water, you can use pasta water, you can use malt extract, you know, you can just use sucrose, uh, like cane sugar, you can do all kinds of stuff. Just mix it up once in a while, whatever you got, whatever's cheap. Um, I, I use a lot of rice flour now. I put rice flour instead of, instead of sugar or malt extract, it works perfectly fine. So somebody was talking about training the mycelium. I use brown rice flour and then I make my spawn on brown rice. So uh, it's actually patty rice, which has the hull on it. But uh, and it's nearly really the brown rice flour. You see, yeah, that that brown rice flour recipe worked great. I, they love it, man. They, they they really really love it. But like I was saying, I think it makes the agar a little thick and still tend to boil up um, if you release the pressure in the PC too quick or the autoclave that I use it set on a timer so it automatically releases the pressure and it's, it's been boiling over because it's set for like a very, very thin agar um, without any like sticky stuff in it. Storage mercy, keep collected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, the, the water storage method, that's what I was going to talk to if nobody was is here, but man, it works great. It is by far, uh, forget about slants. I was, I heard somebody talking about liquid nitrogen. To be honest, liquid nitrogen is expensive. Just put them in sterile water. It works great. Do, 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 do. Yeah, gee, definitely, you know, yeah, if you're mixing up sub and stuff. That was part of the reason why I didn't want to do sub tonight. I just got done making a bunch of wine, um, and I was boiling stuff, and I swept the floor a little bit, and I was like, mm, maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. The humidity will be, like, maybe things will settle down. I've been working in the kitchen all day. I didn't want to, like, I didn't really want to be opening my pot of sub. Um, XP, but no one is um, I'm not sure, Chief, what you're referring to. Everyone knows Vern. I'm not sure. I, I was using perlite for a while. It does work. It's just, again, Verm's probably better. Um, just probably a lot better. It's actually cheaper, at least here. Per, perlite's like three times more expensive. I just had a bag left over from a weed grow and I was like messing with the, the media for weed and I, I gave up on it. it. Weed is too cheap here now, man. It's like $2 a gram. It's not even worth it to like grow your own. Uh, they got big factory farms for that already. Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, gee, maybe my microwave was an older one too. I think it was one of those that weighed like 50 pounds that what do they call that thing the big transformer thing or whatever the convector converter thing it was like scary do, 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 do. This is, uh, uh, green table gardens hey what a grand way mr oh cool oh yeah lunch break oh yeah that's right you guys can uh you guys yeah and you know you guys all got headphones and stuff at work right <laughs> does anybody really work anymore does everybody just like look at their phone it's constantly <laughs> I don't know, but I can't imagine being like in a coffee shop or a cafe and expecting people to sit there waiting for the next customer. I used to work in a cafeteria, man. That was like, I can't imagine if I used to just read magazines or whatever, the newspaper, but if you had a phone with you, God, that would be nice. That would be really nice. Um, <laughs> brain. Brain's still okay. I was feeling a bit tired early, but now I'm kind of woke up. Thanks. It's nice to see you guys out there. Um, what's your favorite way to spores into a syringe with a, oh, um, swabs to a, to a syringe? I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. You could just take the, you know what, I, I did it in one of my videos, but that was for a dilution. So I took a swab and I, I basically like ripped off some of the cotton and I threw that in maybe just like a couple ounces of water. And that was for a cereal dilution. Getting enough spores into a like water suspension or whatever for an actual, like to be effective as a syringe that you're going to use for like BRF cakes or you're going to knock up a grain bag with. I don't think that's a good idea. There's too much stuff that could go wrong. A swab is going to have contaminants. Swabs are basically meant for using for agar work. I don't, that like swabs aren't meant to be turned into syringes. A spore print has tens of millions of spores in it. A swab might have only five or 10,000. I don't know the actual numbers, but so the amount of spores on it. I forgot about that problem. The amount of spores on a swab is going to be like so tiny. Um, I'm going to see if I can, if I, 
Yeah. Okay. If I switch back to something and let it go through, maybe I won't have to keep pushing the button. Yeah. I don't know about making a swab into a, like an MSS multi-sport syringe. If that's what you're talking about, um, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's going to work so well. There's just not enough spores. Um, remember when I was trying to do a serial elution for monos, you only want you want one spore. So that kind of is predisposed already to that method because you already have a very, very dilute spore, but turning it into a, a like multi-spore syringe MSS might not work very well. It's also going to disperse any contaminants that might be there. Whereas with agar, you're on a two-dimensional surface, so you can like pick and choose if there is contaminants, you can isolate away from them. Um, Chief, yeah, there's a sterile water for spores. If you mean, uh, if I have a couple serial dilution ones and there's a long-term storage the video i have if you mean storing spores again i wouldn't store spores in water if you've got a spore print or swabs just store them as is don't put them in water to store them that is kind of like defeats the purpose um you would want them if you got a spore print or swab just keep it like room temperature dark place keep it dry not don't put desiccate in it i've heard of people putting that just keep it as is, as it just like put it in a drawer somewhere, maybe put it inside a Ziploc or something so it doesn't get dirty or dusty, but don't hydrate them or anything. You want to do that later. Um, that would be like getting weed seeds and like putting them in water to store them. Like it, it kind of doesn't make sense, right? You want to wait until later. Uh, Chief Willis and all in one bag. I, Chief, you're kind of losing me. You're jumping around like uh, on topics. I'm not really, sh I'm not really sure where you're what you're doing. Um, this is another change. I mean, you like church There you go. Can you table gardens? Okay. Probably not a, not a lot of people at the church on a Wednesday morning, right? Uh, so there are a lot of tissue storage. Yeah. So chief, if, if you're, or whoever that was, uh, you want to, you can store tissue in water, but not spores. Um, if you do have spores in a syringe already, just put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, if it stays white, it's good if it turns blue. Um, yeah, green table. I, I'm not sure if it really matters the color. You just you just want to get it in the water. Um, you know, not all of us store mycelium that turns blue. <laughs> I used it for oyster mushrooms and lentinus before. <laughs> I had lots and lots of uh we're swab only grab and drink. Yeah, Andy, Andy's right there. I think with swabs, just either keep them as they are or gear up to do agar you don't want to be messing with the swab until you're ready to use it and the grab and drag is is yeah i think easily not to, not to blow our own horns but i think that's the way we've all figured out together like that's the way people should be doing it now hey alan how's it going over in denmark you guys must be but about must be about six or seven in that evening there um, let's see. how long was four print last in a drawer uh four racks for X, uh, years, years, put a spore print, um, in a, in a cool, not even cool, just like room temperature place. It, it'll last for years. There will be a decline in the germination rate, but I mean, you're talking after two, three years, maybe, but if you've got a nice print that is stored properly and was made properly, a lot of people make prints and they leave the cap too long. Um, once you get a visible spore print on your aluminum foil, um, take the print off and make another or take the cap off and make another print. Don't let it sit there for like 20. So people will say 12 or 24 hours. That's way too long because the spores are sitting there in moist conditions. They, there's a chance that might germinate. As soon as you can see a visible spore print, you know, take a flashlight and look down on the foil. As soon as you can see there's spores there, move the cap and make another print. You can usually get at least six prints, seven, eight, depending on what kind of how big the cap is. And, and if it's a good cap, you don't need to do that. Put a drop of water on the top. Of. If it is a dry print, if it is a dry cap and you want to maybe get a better print out of it, you can take a little piece of tissue and like uh, like take a moist piece of toilet paper and kind of fold it into a little square and, and try to like position it on top of the cap so it gives a little bit of moisture and cover it up with something. Either put it in a Tupperware box like I, um, like I showed you guys last time or uh, cover it with a bowl. You know, I put it on like a flat surface and cover it with a bowl or a big cup or something like that. So there's no air currents. 
Yes, assholes. <laughs> CKB times the uh, uh, cross with that B, B negative or, or B minus or whatever. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. That one, I, uh, yeah, I just harvested another across the CKB with a Veracruz mono. mono. And, uh, oh, the tattoo with something else. What was it? Jeez, I just wrote it down. I just did it. I just took a clone earlier and I can't remember what it was. But I got the tattoo blobbed across with something too. Maybe it was a AMAC reverb. Oh, can't remember. I wrote it down, but I cannot remember what it was right now. Too much stuff in my brain. Uh, really curious. What is subsequent F? Yeah, the 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 next F generation. I think from that CKB, the blob and the the, the so what would be the F one spores? What you have and the F twos and the F threes. That's why I'm really really excited uh, about what's gonna come out of there. The I'm sure you saw pictures of the the f1 fruits they look really like messed up <laughs> they look really gnarly like if there's a, a good word to describe though they look gnarly like they were just like all contorted and the the three ckb crosses i've done uh the diamond crosses like they all looked like there was something wrong with them but in a good way <laughs> you know you sort of get this like vibe off of things it's like that's got some secrets in it and I picked one of them yesterday and the thing just, I know I'm always saying like bluing doesn't matter, but it like just was just blue all over. It looked like it got run over by a car or something. I was just like barely touching it. So, but yeah, it, it does, it shows the silicon in there, right? So, so maybe there's more if it bruises faster. I, I, I totally agree with that. It's just people put too much emphasis on it. Like here's what's in the end. Yeah, I'm still in this. I don't know what I need to do. As we need. I have a spore print that is maybe like, yeah, Chief, don't worry. If you got spore prints, just keep it as is. You can use them six months later, a year later. It, it's not going to, just don't like get them too hot and don't get them like, don't put them in like moist. You know, just put it in like a Ziploc baggie and throw it in your drawer. Or if you want to be like, I used to tape them to the inside of the drawer. So, you know, I had a roommate and I, he would always go through my stuff, put it in the drawer. And there's an old trick, right? You tape it to the, like under the desk inside the drawer. Yeah, that's where you can hide stuff, money too. You know, if your roommate's a fucking crackhead and, you know, likes to steal your money or something, you just put your money in there and tape it under the desk. Uh, hopefully, Colin, there you go. Um, yeah, B. Hendrix, man. Um, that's how I make my LC is I take a piece of agar and I just chuck it. Uh, put it in the LC because I like to grow on agar to make sure it's completely clean. These people um, that are multiplying their their liquid culture uh, from other liquid culture, I kind of don't like doing that. Um, I, I if I'm going to make LC, I make like two or three hundred mils of it, and I'll use a piece of agar and just chunk like a little tiny piece, just like a quarter inch piece, just put it straight in the LC. It's easy. You got to be a little careful, you know, because you're taking off this big lid and it's like there's a chance stuff will get in it. Um, but yeah, you can just chuck a piece of agar in there or you can do the uh, uh, the if you want to do it from a fruit, do the tissue biopsy. One of the older videos, it was one of the first videos I made was a, a tissue bi biopsy where you just take a fruit and spray it with 70 uh, percent and then you just jam a needle in it it's go watch the video it's a little bit more detailed than that um, it's not hard it's just um you just watch the video it's a lot easier it's a fairly good video you can see exactly what i'm doing um, and if you have questions I'll, i can go more into detail about it I used to always say, you know, my British friend, they used to, they, they smoke what they call slips, which are weed with tobacco, which I think has a different connotation in America, but means like weed with other powder stuff. Right. But, uh, but yeah, he would, they would, he'd always be like Bogart in it. And they're like, I'm like, puff, puff, pass. <laughs> if any of you guys are into old rap, you, you'll know what, I'm, how that ends. 
Uh, but yeah, puff, puff, pass. Uh, yeah, he would, he would always be, uh, what you say, Bogart in the joint. He'd be like, talk you know he's like take three puffs and then start talking about some like television show he was watching and like the puff puff pass you know back when weed was like 25 bucks and eight you know for dirt weed <laughs> now nobody even shares anymore right because it's so cheap you just smoke your own joint <laughs> so it says yeah gnarly is a good word to just kind of zip lock in the fridge chief um i wouldn't put them in the fridge to be honest, because fridges go through like condensation cycles and humidity changes. Um, I would just keep them at room temperature, but if you want to put them in the fridge, the problem is fridges with power outages. Like when I put cultures and stuff in the fridge, I don't like it because the condensation, like if your fridge goes out because the electric or whatever and everything gets wet, uh, I don't like putting stuff in the fridge, spawn, uncolonized spawn, colonized spawn, plates. I have bad luck with fridges. Um, I would, I think just leave it outside. But if you like the fridge, go for it. Just make, and also fridges freeze sometimes, right? I've had fridges that'll like fuck up and they freeze. And if you freeze your spores, they're pretty much done. Like cube spores aren't going to like being frozen. Hey, depraved. How's it going? Chief, yeah, Chief. I, it's somewhere on there. It says literally like um, tissue, needle biopsy. It, it's pretty old. Like if you put them, I don't know if you can put them in chronological order, but it'll be, be near the end. It's, you can get a look at my kitchen. I know that you guys have seen both parts of my house. Maybe one of y'all figure where I live. Ah, found it. Dee, 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 dee. Arctic Timber Wolf, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good, man. I was bored till I found you guys. <laughs> the under even pants and LC syringe, I could give a few starter tips. Um, pants and LC, like I said, I'm not really familiar with pants and if you're making spawn, just treat it like any other LC. Um, there's not really any tips to give. You would treat pan. Um, liquid culture just like any other liquid culture there's like hundreds of videos on that shit now like knocking up an lc uh knocking up a grain bag or mason jars or whatever you use it exactly the same way as you would a, um you would a cube or any other any other fungus for that matter yeah andy yeah you guys are over there and in, in, in europe and, and that side of the, the pond uh, well i'm on the other side <laughs> different pond different side yeah uh, i heard people in america when they use, use spliffs now it usually means with a bit of fucking coke in it or something which might be a little bit of surprise if you're if you're not ready for it i guess it'd be it'd be technically be crack not coke. uh do, 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 do. Chief, okay, the good old, <laughs> the good old radio. Yeah, exactly, man. The old fridges. I don't trust fridges, man. And where I live, the electric goes out so much. I just have tried to not. And also, I've got my food in there. So I, you don't want to, like, really. I don't really like the idea of mixing myco stuff with, like, human stuff. And, you know, who knows, man? You know, my friend here, he had a big, huge box of blue cheese and the Thai maid came in and threw it away. It was like a like a $150 block of blue cheese. She thought it was moldy, but she threw it away. You know, God forbid, like your your partner, your kids find your box of, uh, you know, aluminum foil. They see a box of aluminum foil in Ziploc baggies. They'll think it's garbage. Cleaning out the fridge and they throw away your like last 10 years of a culture collection or uh, uh you know spore collection yeah that would be bad um lc storage i don't know again if you're if you're storing lc put it in the fridge but i wouldn't even bother i, I think at room temperature it's probably okay for a little while but um lc is so readily available now and it costs like what 10 or 15 bucks i don't know um, either expand it the one way, um, but I've used my LC. I have LC sitting right there that's been sitting there for a year, um, and I've I've pulled out um, I've pulled out cultures, live cultures from it. I wouldn't 
if you got old LC, I wouldn't use it directly to inoculate. I'd either expand it or put it on agar or something to check it. Um, like if you're storing LC for six months and you're expecting it to take off when you shoot it into a grain bag or a, a mason jar, like I don't think that's gonna, that's a bit, expecting a bit too much. But if you're using LC as just simply like a storage method for something you're gonna use later, yeah, it seems fine. I've, I've pulled cultures out of LC that have had sitting for over a year um just sitting still and they'll form like a little like a pellicle like a, a little film like a scoby for kombucha and then you can just pull some of that off but if it's a syringe just you know i don't know try to squirt some of it out onto an agar plate and uh, and get it growing again and then make new, new refresh stuff but i wouldn't use like an old lc syringe that's been stored for six months and you know i wouldn't expect it to like perform as it you know, was supposed to when you bought it. Uh, weed grinder, yes, we can talk about agars. <laughs> Transfers. Uh, I keep my liquid cultures in the refrigerator. Yeah, and you can do that. It's, that's what most people do, I think. But I just keep them at room temperature. But I, I probably use them a lot faster than, like, I have them in bigger jars, and I just pull it when I need it. So, but yeah, I would think. They used to say that like cubes, you couldn't keep cube stuff in the fridge. That was another bit of misinformation that I don't know where I saw it in a book by Stamets. Uh, and, and other people jumped on it and they just kept saying the same thing. Oh my God, like don't, don't store your cube spawn and in the refrigerator and don't, it was just more information that they wanted to keep, uh, people store cube stuff in the fridge all the time. It's like, oh, it's a tropical mushroom, it'll die. And like, no, it's, it's not really very much of it. It's a subtropical mushroom, but um, it doesn't die. It's well known. I've got liquid culture. I've got a piece of agar um, in sterile water in my fridge, too. I just threw some in there to get it out of the way. Not all this stuff. Well, don't store your cubes in the fridge. Like, they'll freeze to death. It's too cold. That, that's bullshit. More misinformation out there that they wanted just to make it seem like Oh, like somebody was saying earlier on my, one of my YouTube videos that this idea that monocaryons, monocaryons don't, um, they'll die quickly. They don't. You can keep subculture in a monocaryon over and over and over again. I've got monocaryons. They grow just like they did when I isolated them. They're on like their 10th transfer. No problem. Monocaryons don't die. They, they live. It's just like, you know, like ferns and stuff. When you or, or moss, you when you see the moss stuff on the floor on the floor of the forest or whatever by the <clears throat> that's the like haploid, uh, you know, the the N, like that's kind of like our monocaryons. It's like a haploid. So lower organisms don't really care if they're haploid or diploid or they're dicaryotic. They just keep growing. They there's another bit of misinformation they were throwing around that oh monocaryons will die oh, you can't don't bother because they die so quickly it's like that's bullshit too that was the people who wanted to stop everybody from getting in on their little breeding games but that's clearly not true okay so flight i've been making fresh fruit in the us yeah casual flight um yeah that whole argon thing go for it man i'm not gonna bother i know that was going around the argon and the nitrogen and me and me and geeky we're gonna talk about it um it's unnecessary uh if you have dried fruits in a vacuum sealed bag argon is really like irrelevant there was a reference i found to it that compares you can look it up just put it in a google search like comparing argon to nitrogen and something else maybe it was co2 or something there's no difference what you want to keep them away from is basically oxygen and moisture so if you want to replace the moist whatever the, the air in there the oxygen by stuffing argon in there which is kind of like not necessary because we have like vacuum sealers right so the minuscule amount of air that's in that bag and the minuscule amount of moisture, like you should put a silica gel packet in there to suck up that residual moisture or the moisture that's, you know, in the bag when you seal it. Uh, argon is not necessary 
I don't, again, I don't know if somebody's selling argon or what. You use like argon in open wine bottles and that's very simple because it's denser. Like argon is dense. So it basically pushes, it's going to float down to the bottom or sink down to the bottom and it's going to displace the oxygen just like carbon dioxide does or just like any other gas if you if you ram a bunch of nitrogen in there you know like the, the snacks and crisp we buy you know potato chips like when they package them depending on on the manufacturer they may like flood the bag with nitrogen all they're really doing is they're putting an inert gas so argon's inert and nitrogen's inert and there's a lot of other what we call noble gases what we used to call uh the noble gases um what do they call like he, neon and helium and things like that um they used to be called noble gases what are they called now I forgot there's a different name for them inert gases inert gases yeah i think that's literally they're called now the inert gases uh inert was it's kind of funny because noble mean you know like royalty or whatever but inert they're not inert like xenon xenon and argon are quite big they will actually will react with stuff so it's a little bit kind of funny that they chose argon the reason they use argon is because it's more dense but argon will react with things but those things are like chlorine and fluorine gas like argon's not going to react with much else besides like fluorine and chlorine um so it's inert um and it's also dense but it's it's unnecessary please you guys don't waste your money on buying argon that's like silly get a vacuum sealer get silica gel packets and put your fruits in there that's that's all you got to do this whole thing i don't know exactly how you get argon in the bag but i reckon the procedure for getting argon is is more complicated than than any benefit it could probably have um, so we grinder. I cloned the fruit. I must have cloned a fruit to agar. Is it okay to send that plate to green? Uh, yeah, you can send it if it's like absolutely 100% clean. I'd say only about 50% of the clones I make on agar are clean 100%. Usually there's going to be something fuzzy around where you put that. I just cloned like earlier. Um, I would personally probably not send uh an an agar plate that's got a piece of clone on it because the piece of the tissue might also be dirty so just because you don't see bacteria on the agar surface or you don't see some funny stuff the piece the actual tissue that you've cloned might be dirty right and that you're sitting there i mean think what you're doing you're taking a piece of mushroom and you're putting it on a plate and letting it sit there for a week or more. What do you think is going to happen to that piece of mushroom? It's going to rot, right? Like any piece of mushroom, regardless of how sterile you are, if you let it sit at room temperature on a, on a plate for a week, sucking up sugar and whatever, like it's going to rot. So I personally wouldn't do it. But if you don't have extra plates to, to subculture it to, uh, a transfer. Uh, so you got in in the mo most of the world uses the term subculture, but for some reason we say transfer. But yes, uh, weed grinder. I would transfer it again, but um, that's for multiple reasons. Because I usually use one plate to make like multiple jars of spawn. So I would use one ninety millimeter plate to probably make three or four jars worth of spawn. Now, if you're doing like the tiger drop again, uh, I don't know where that word that term came from. I don't like that either. But if you're gonna throw the whole agar plate in there, um, uncolonized agar or agar, uh, a random piece of tissue from a mushroom that's been sitting there for a week or two. I don't know, man. That I don't. I wouldn't want to throw like that kind of garbage into my sterilized grain, but. Again, if you maybe if you don't have extra plates laying around. Uh, oh, yeah, I was wondering something. Nothing was popping up. I knew I was getting behind here. Um, I keep uh, Who 
Uh, Alan, thoughts on bringing old Prince? Uh, hydrate him and let him sit for a little while before you put him on the agar. LC, um, I don't know what you mean by like old, old LC. I would um, put it into fresh LC and re regenerate it. Like I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't use it to shoot directly into sterilized grain. I would make like new LC or put the LC on a plate and then make LC, fresh LC from that plate. <laughs> yeah, old prints on. Yeah, like Andy said there. Uh, make your make your agar softer. So put less um less agar in it. So instead of two percent, use like one point five or one point two. Um, and then it's better luck. And you can I can use that. You know, make a trench like do the grab and drag kind of thing. Or if you've got a print, like take your scalpel and like scrape up some of the prints and then actually like. <laughs> like cut into the agar so those and i did it the other day and i kind of like twist it so you're making like those those spores are actually going to be down in the little the little invagination <laughs> the little crevice of the agar so they're not just like sitting on top of the, the agar. <laughs> cool you go yeah right yeah you guys that the four percent that was suggested for like sugar and LCs is too high. I don't know why people were suggesting that. Drop it down to like two or even one, or I do it now at 0 0.5 malt extract. Um, I don't know, people were saying like 4% honey and 4% corn syrup, that's way too high. 2% is as high as you should be going. I don't know where that came from either. Um, and use a scale, you guys don't, when you're talking about a tablespoon of honey, they're a table. That is not, you get a damn scale. Come on, man. Anybody who's still using tablespoons or quarter cups or whatever in the mycology world is like, that's like 1950. Like we're not making brownies. Like we're doing serious, like, you know, precise work. If you're talking about adding a tablespoon of something that's like of honey, what the fuck is a tablespoon of honey? Right? That could be like so be like five grams or 20 grams a year. This so use it use a scale <laughs> yeah right a year fresh spore prints yeah i think no problem then or even the lc i mean I, I haven't done like extensive testing but that's been my um my experience hey alaska donut <laughs> alaskan donut <laughs> i wonder if that means something else do, 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 do. last night in the pre-port beacon of your fan uh pre-pour bead container oh all oh, those things yeah you know some of those those pre-pour containers they're hard to work with k cups bead containers they're hard to work with petri dishes are have been used for for you know over 100 years for a reason it's they're very very convenient Doo -doo 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 -doo. and the other thing is you don't, you don't have to lift the lid up very far you can kind of sneak in there from the side uh old uh oh let's see uh so haploids will degrade though no no i i haven't um yeah old brown wookie i have not seen a problem with haploid monocarions so i don't i don't know yeah stamets was all about that p number shit again i think it was like misinformation he wanted you to buy more culture media and more petri dishes that he was charging a dollar for like unfilled like sterile petri dishes like eight dollars for a sleeve of tin um he was making a lot of money doing that that's why he wanted you to think you know you needed a subculture your cultures like you know every week buy more plates buy more yeah, it's ridiculous so is there a way i could use four swabs without um yeah yeah girls fave um i would just say no i'm gonna leave it just say no swabs are meant for agar um, you can read about people sticking swabs in dirt or what it's, swabs are made for agar. Um, if you're doing anything except putting a swab to agar, you are going to probably, there's a 99% chance you're going to fail. You can try. Uh, it's a waste of 10 bucks or 15 bucks. 
but you can try, but you know, you should learn agar. The whole idea with swabs is to go to agar. That's what they're for. Oh, uh, when they blue eyes is on the Yeah, Alan over on Wookie. Yeah, point. Yeah. And like so like point what that yeah, like point one percent, not point. Yeah, you can go way down. The last time my friend uses 0 0.25 for LC. It works fine. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm real. This is me, Momo Nanga. It's like eleven. It's like eleven thirty here. Hope my neighbors. It's like a real work. Day. We had a holiday, you guys, over the weekend. Like last Friday was a holiday, and then Monday and today were holidays. And I think tomorrow is people's like first day back to work. So I might not be able to go till like maybe another hour or so, and then I'm probably gonna have to. My neighbors are like right on the other side of that wall. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, casual flight, you gotta learn how to use your vacuum sealer. It shouldn't crush them. Um, you don't, don't push the button that says, there's like two buttons. There's one where you can just like manually suck out the air. Use that button. The cheaper ones that will literally suck it out and then automatically seal. Eh. Get one where you, there's mine, it only costs about 25 bucks, but you can stop it. You can just sort of like suck the air out a little at a time you need one of those those kind of sealers and then you push the button to seal it like manually do, 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 do. uh momananga why would you want to dip your mushroom in hydrogen peroxide to sterilize it no just use ethanol uh, so maybe you're from the plant tissue culture world the, the a mushroom that you're trying to clone or whatever it should be relatively clean so you rip it apart so you get a piece of the internal tissue. Hydrogen peroxide shouldn't use that for cloning or whatever you're trying to do. Um, I know they use it for plant tissue culture and the bleach and all that. For mushrooms, you just take a mushroom and rip it in half. The inside of that mushroom should be sterile. Well, not sterile because it's alive, but it should be clean. There shouldn't be any bacteria on the inside of the cap or the inside of the stipe, the stem. Somebody was saying that the, the inside of the cap may be better. Um, yeah, it probably, it probably is. It's a little bit easier to rip out a piece of tissue. The stem, the only problem is some, some, t uh, some mushrooms don't have a really big cap on them. And you have to stay away from the spores and stay away from the surface of the cap. So it really depends on the mushroom and your technique. If you can get a tweezers and sort of twist out a piece of the cap tissue, that works really well. Um, otherwise, you can just take the whole thing and split it down the middle and uh, and just pull a piece out of the, of the stem. That works fine. Somebody said there was a big difference in the, the growth rates. I'm not really sure about that. I've done it both ways. It's not really a matter of like, which one's gonna grow better. It's just a matter of like, which one, which can you get a piece easier from the inside of the cap or you can get a piece easier from the stem. That's really what should dictate where you get it from it doesn't it does it's not like oh which one you want to grow faster it's like which place on the mushroom can you most easily get a clean piece from um that should be more of a consideration rather than like uh how fast it's gonna go or whatever any funny channel being this oh thanks jason <laughs> oh brown okay then some nursery rhyme <laughs> Uh, should we learn from this? Come, I hope so. That's it. A little scary sometimes that this stuff's gonna be out there on YouTube for like probably forever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> old brown wiki exorbitant. Yes, good word too. <laughs> sometimes I try to learn new big words. That's what my my PhD advisor. He literally like my my advisor. He is like. After about a month of listening to my redneck Michigan ass, he was like, you need to learn how to talk with more words. <laughs> and uh, he was right. Uh, to, I, I tried learning new words and stuff. And then, yeah, it's amazing. It makes you sound so much smarter when you know big words. <laughs> how do you make LC from a plate? 
<laughs> all you, you just literally get get your LC and you uh, take a piece of the agar and chuck it in there. Like take your scalpel and cut out a little quarter inch piece, <laughs> get it on the tip of your scalpel, and then get your LC and you know open it. And if you can do it with like one hand, and then just boop, tap it in there, your your piece of agar drops down in the LC, close it back up. Give it a swirl, get some oxygen in the LC. You guys remember when you're making LC after you PC it, all the oxygen has been boiled out of it. So when you inoculate LC, whether it be with another syringe or a piece of agar or a tissue biopsy, make sure you give it a swirl. Don't shake it, swirl it because you need to get oxygen in there because after PCing your liquid culture, all the oxygen has been pushed out of that liquid. So you need to get oxygen in there. Um, otherwise you're, they have done it. You, you do a needle biopsy and then you're like, wow, it's not growing. And then you, for like two days and then you give it a swirl. And then like, after you swirl it, like six hours later, you're like, oh, like it needed oxygen. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think I went, did I go up too far or maybe, yeah, I think you guys doubled, doubled the questions there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, girls, Fabe. I think you asked that question um, up higher, and I answered that. Um, the answer is no. I mean, you can use spore swabs for other stuff. I'm not going to suggest it. Just use agar. Uh, Momo, it's tw It's almost midnight here. It's like um, it's 11.42 p.m. here. Sterilizer for clones. Don't know what that means, Momo. Uh, Steve, uh, hey, yeah, all right. What would you say is the number one contributor to getting a full canopy clone, a good clone? Jonathan, um, if you want to get a canopy, you need to pick a good clone. Um, I know everybody, everybody's fascinated with canopies. There's only really one way to do that is to get a monoculture from a clone. And if that clone is growing in the can, so keep the conditions the same. You do a multi-spore or T0 plate or multi-spore syringe. You pick the best fruit from that grow which means the best for your conditions for your temperature for your substrate for your ambient light etc you pick the clone the mushroom that performed well in that particular situation could be a monotub could be a bag could be a tray could be a shoe box whatever you pick the mushroom that from a multi-spore so you're doing a pheno hunt to get a canopy you get you do a pheno hunt just like they do with weed and you pick the pheno that you want based on the conditions that you are providing for it. So now if you move from bags to monotubs, I've had this trouble because some of the LC that I've, I've gotten from other people, it was designed for, it was selected for use in a monotub. Now, when I move it to my shoe boxes, it may not perform well. So then you've got to go back to spores. So you go back to spores and you do the same process again. You do a pheno hunt. And the phenotype that gives you what you want could be tall, fast, whatever, big, small, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, and then you get that monoculture and you grow that monoculture in your tub. And if you keep the conditions the same, you will probably get a canopy. You're never going to get a canopy on. Uh, rarely are you going to get a canopy from a multi spore. Uh, like a T0 plate, which is you don't want. That's that's not the idea of running T0 plates. Uh, the second thing is you're probably not going to get a canopy from LC because the person that inoculated that LC probably used a clone or something that was suited to their conditions, not yours. So you get fruits and then you go back to spores and you do your own phenol hunt. Mm -hmm. Okay, Obama, okay, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Field study. Do, 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 do. Okay, why, why are you so good to stuff on FN? Um, I don't know what FN means, but then I am actually I went to school. I have a PhD in mycology. Um, before that I studied chemical engineering. So I have an undergraduate degree in chemical engineering from a like top 10 school in the US and I also have a PhD in actual mycology mushrooms. Uh plus I'm 40. I'm like old. I'm 49 years old, you guys. I'm old. 
Um, I've been doing this stuff for like 30 years. Uh, I've seen lots of things in this, this home mycology thing. I was like, uh, so I, I've read like all the books and all this stuff. You guys probably don't even like, I've, I've probably done things that some of you have probably like never even heard of. So. <laughs> it's like, uh, plus I'm, I'm very, I was in very avid field, uh, like a forager. Um, I spent many years wandering through the woods in Michigan, just finding mushrooms and identifying them. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I, oh, fun. Yeah. I tried to, I tried to be fun because I'm a lot of times I'm too serious. I, I like to, I like to try to lighten it up. This actually kind of stuff is quite relaxing for me to talk to you guys. Uh, yeah, Alaskan Donut, we kind of, we talked about that. Uh, we talked about that this little while ago. Generally lower the nutrients uh, is for rhizomorphic growth, but there's a limit and it depends on your recipe. Uh, yeah, I, Steve. Bonus, I, I thought about doing that before. The problem with doing multi-spore in LC is it's probably probably one or two of the individual strains is going to take over the LC. Um, we were just talking about that yesterday on that geeky show. But like if you do that, the problem is LC that it's like on a even on an agar plate, you're, you're going to have probably one of the um, isolates or what would be an isolate takeover. So you're not going to really get um, you're not going to really get a good representation. Whereas when you take a plate, a T0 agar plate, and you put it in grain, you kind of break it apart. So you could have little, kind of like a little neighborhood of different, like sort of isolates, you know, different dicarions. And so that might give them a better chance. If you've just got those like 20 grains and that's the dicarion that you want. And because the dicarions are going to fight with each other they're going to be fighting for nutrients. So if maybe that one little patch, that one little address in the grain, um, you know, that's the, that's the phenotype that you want. You're probably going to want to use it for agar. Um, and plus LC is usually for doing large volumes. So I don't know why you'd want to do like a large volume. Like, I don't know why you'd make 200 milliliters of LC from a multi-sport plate. Cause that's usually not why you're making LC. Like if you're doing, like uh, made an LC from T0 or T1 plates and you're knocking up like I like more than three jars. I don't know why you would be doing that. Um, you should definitely shouldn't be like selling that if that I don't know, like some people a lot of times when people ask those types of questions that it's usually because they want to sell the LC. If you're making LC from a T0 plate and selling it, that's like completely and utterly unethical. Um, that's kind of why we got into that discussion yesterday. Like if you're taking T0 plates and selling them or you're selling LC made from a T0 plate, that is horribly, horribly unethical. Um, that's like, that's like really, really like almost like blasphemy, like on so many levels, which I don't even want to get into, but uh, so yeah, I don't want to get excited about that, that you should, yeah, people do some kind of unethical and sort of devious things to make money. It gets me excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Girl fave. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can do that. Look up, uh, how to grow oyster mushroom from stem butts. Seems like, yeah, girls, you're like uh, really, really looking for like the shortcuts. Um, that's probably not going to work out well for you. Um, mycology is not about shortcuts. Like if you're just trying to get to the end point as quickly and easily possible, you're not going to have good luck. Most people that try to cut corners and do like things like you're suggesting, uh, yeah, you're, you're, I can see you're confused. You should really, really do a little more research. Um, there's not a lot of ways to get like short cuts in mycology. There's so many ways to mess it up. Um, 
Yeah, Kyle the Jesus. Yeah, they do it with oysters. They always show you the oyster ones that, that when they succeed, um, I'd say at least 50% of the time it just turns into garbage. But, you know, to each their own man, if you want to do shortcuts, go for it. I wouldn't suggest it, but most people aren't going to, like, throw away their butts from a cube grow anyway. So good luck getting, like, the butts from, like, <laughs> from somebody's cube grow. Do, 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 do. So, uh, Momo, uh, when you say go to bulk, I'm assuming, yeah, I don't know, what do you mean bulk? If that means like you're going to fill up like 20 mono tubs or what? Um, <laughs> so four, bags, uh, four bags of the same strain. Well, they turn out different. Um, by strain, I don't, you're going to have to, Steve, you'll have to be more specific about what do you mean by strain? Do you mean like you've got four, four bags of, from the same LC, which was a monoculture? You have four bags of, uh, that you made from four parts of a T0 plate. Um, you have to be more specific about that. <laughs> I just wanted to, I forgot I should read you guys' questions because uh, I was listening to this, the audio. I was uh, making sure I didn't say anything stupid the other day. I should probably reread the questions um, just in case. I know I would probably be good to put on at work, you know, if you're busy. And I'll, I'll try to reread the questions. Yeah, thank you, Melinda. Yeah, I was getting high during the thought. Jesus Christ, yeah. I, I don't know. I know some of you guys out there are probably high right now. That's all good. But you're not talking to like, you know, 61 people. <laughs> I, trust me, I'll, I'll never be high while I'm doing a live chat. It's like, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I know dudes that smoke weed like every 20 minutes. So if that's what you do all day, I guess it's, it's such a thing. Um, so if I two grains of the same culture, how to recognize each other? um kyle how do they recognize each other when get me what do you mean recognize each other are you trying to make like a hybrid or something i'm not sure why you would you sh you shouldn't what do you mean two grain yards of the same with the same culture uh it wouldn't matter they don't need to recognize each other they'll just grow together if it's the same genotype they'll just merge together they don't need to like recognize each other if you're putting two different I don't know what you mean. They've been two grain jars with the same culture. If they're the same exact monoculture, same genotype, it doesn't matter. They they will they don't need to recognize each other because it's the same thing. Uh yeah, noise and yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for all the nice uh uh vertical or horizontal flow hoods. No, I don't really care. I've used both of them. It doesn't matter. It's about your technique. SAB, still air box, you know, or a vertical hood, horizontal hood, it's irrelevant. They all work. Uh, how the did you know that I am not trying to cut? So it's, it's just new. Uh, yeah, yeah, girl, I'm not, I'm not trying to be like a dick or anything. It's just you're asking this the questions that a lot of beginners do ask. Uh, and I'm just telling you straight away, I, I wanted to be nice about it, but what I'm saying is that they just don't even bother. If you're going to take like somebody else's garbage, the butts or whatever from a previous grow and use that to make a new grow. Yeah, go for it. But it's just a waste of time. Now, if you want to play around with oysters or what, that's fine, but I, it's just, I can tell you, it's just, you're going to waste your time. And you'll be disappointed, and then you'll get discouraged, and then you'll just quit 100%. So I don't know. Like a lot of people are into the shortcuts and whatever, whatever you want to call them. Uh, if you really want to succeed, just continue to do research and try not to, like, listen to people who are, like, like mushrooms are not for lazy people to grow. You've got to learn how to do it, and that's just it. Um, I know I've taught hundreds of people over the years so again, I'm not trying to be mean to you or anything. It's just like, I know where this is going because I've taught so many people. Maybe not, maybe, 
maybe not, but you need to read more uh, about like, uh, there's a lot of information available. Um, you really, really got to do some research out there. I can't, I can't communicate like the entire process of growing mushrooms in like this short period of time. People really need to um, like get out and read some stuff. It's, I just, I know because again, I, I send links to people and they won't read them. I have people asking me what books they should read. I know they won't read them. I send them links, URLs. I know they won't read them. Um, so it just gets a little frustrating. Burgers are awesome, generally. Okay, Alaskan donut. Uh, vertical horizontal on a winter. Um, these LCDs are fun. Yeah, so the breeding books, you guys, the, the Chang and Miles, there's three of them. I can't remember the names of the books. Uh, the microscopy thing, unfortunately, there's, there's not really like a particular book about like fungal microscopy that I know of. Um, it's more like you would probably look at a generic like microbiology book or there's a lot of YouTube videos about how to use a microscope. Um, but usually the only thing you do for like with, with a microscope is to look for clamp connections. If you're talking about breeding, that's like pretty much the only thing you do. So again, it's unfortunate, but it's hard to make videos through the microscope. Um, and I don't have a, I don't have a digital like camera hooked up to any of the microscopes I use. So sorry, I can't provide that kind of video. I tried to mount my mobile phone, you know, my cell phone on the microscope and it was just such a pain in the butt. My phone fell on the floor. It was, it was just a disaster. So yeah, the book, uh, Chang and Miles, look them up. So C-H-A-N-G, Chang, Chang is how you might say it, Chang, Chang. Um, look up that guy, <clears throat> Raymond Chang, I think is his name. Or, oh no, that's, an, uh, I can't remember his first name. Look up Chang mushrooms on Google. It'll pop up. <laughs> yeah, Q wait. Yeah. So he's they're saying what I just said too. You can get away with like little things and oysters, like putting them between cardboard and stuff like that, or cramming them down in a toilet paper roll. Uh, it's not gonna work with cubes. Or you're gonna be like extremely lucky if it does. <clears throat> yeah, that's why I, I kind of don't like it when some of these mushroom companies, they put out their little like, oh, you can just like, or the Instagram things, just save your mushrooms or they'll cut off a Nokis or something. I'm like, look, you could, it's, it's not, they're just trying to get IG views, right? Yeah, Momo T0 is not going to give you a canopy. No way. Unless again, you got extremely, extremely lucky. Or if it's if you're using LC, so again, that's why people like LC. But that LC might not be suited for your particular conditions. Mm -hmm. Hey, somebody at work listening. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Of. It would be nice. Sometimes I put on some other guys, even though I wouldn't really ever listen to them. This one, one guy in particular, it's just I'll listen to five hours of this guy ranting like, just because I'm, I'm making sub or something and I can't change the video. I'm like, oh, I know this will go on forever. <laughs> Put this on. Uh, okay, Steve, four all-in-one bags from the same MSS. I don't remember what your question was. Uh, so MSS means multi-spore syringe. That means you're going to have a whole bunch of different genotypes. So basically, you're going to end up with the situation that um, that we used to have with the BRF cakes, the PF tech. You're going to have a bunch of different phenotypes. Um, so if you get it all in one bag and you're using multi-spore syringes, um, again, I didn't even know people did that because you're injecting spores into grain, right? 
That's never really been suggested because grain is so nutritious that if you have a contaminant, mm, yeah, good luck. I thought people were shooting LC into the all, grow in one, uh, all in one grow bags. I didn't know people were shooting multi-spore syringes in there. Mm. Yeah, good luck with that. I don't, um, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I would never suggest somebody to do that. Um, there's like a lot of stuff to talk about there. Um, I, I'm not sure who would have suggested shooting MSS into a grain bag. That's probably going to get contaminated. People usually shoot liquid culture into those all in one bags. Um, so yeah, good luck with that. Momo, read Radical Mycology. Momo, Momo Nanga, read Radical Mycology by Peter McCoy. It's the best book on mycology out there. He has a lot of different topics in it. It's about this like two and a half, three inches thick, but it's the best book. And uh, yeah, read it. It's all over the internet. It costs like 200 bucks, I think, if you buy it, but it's it's all over the internet. Not that I'm suggesting you would get you know, that book. <laughs> uh, it's just about the books that you do. Pyrex Petri dishes? Um, by Pyrex, you mean the brand? No, because I, I don't even know if they're, uh, I don't know. Or if you mean glass? I have used glass Petri dishes. I don't like them. I cut the hell out of my wrist one time on a broken Petri dish, a glass Petri dish. Like I almost killed myself. Since then, glass, when you wash glass Petri dishes, they're under the water. If one of them breaks, you can't see broken glass underwater. And I reached in this sink and there was a fucking broken Petri dish in there. I don't know if it was from me or somebody else. And thrown it in there and they covered it with water and I reached down in the water and it fucking gashed my wrist like I was bleeding. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of glass petri dishes. I don't care how you know green or eco-friendly you want to be. I'm never touching a glass petri dish again. Uh, I have enough trouble with like glass Erlenmeyer flask and stuff like that. So yeah, like Andy said there, <laughs> radical mycology. So that's the uh the the maybe the <laughs> I, the MYC, I think that's how most uh, Westerners, at least Americans, would say. But radical mycology, yeah, I've heard people say that too. Might be spelled differently in a different country. But if you're searching, you might want to put a Y in there. Uh, it's the, uh, yeah, photophilic. There's a bunch of YouTube stuff on microscopy. Um, the thing is, like, yeah, microscopy. You kind of need to like watch somebody do it it's it's really hard to learn that stuff from a book and it also depends on like what microscope you have you know there's so many different brands and types of microscopes so do you do, do, do you yes yeah i yeah there you go thank you alan that's the that's the book right there alan yeah chang what is it a i don't know alan or something yeah it's funny because there's a chemistry guy who wrote a book called, his name is Raymond Chang, and I can never, so here in Thailand, people have a lot of the name Chang, Chang means elephant, and there's a beer named Chang. A lot of Westerners say Chang, and I don't know, it's kind of funny. But yeah, that's the book, Genetics and Breeding of Edible Mushrooms. That's, thank you, Alan. I might copy that later because that's exactly the, the book. I couldn't remember the name of it. I think Chang and, um, Chang and a guy, Miles, his last name is Miles. Uh, they've got a couple other books too that, that are um, that are about breeding. They go into the whole, they even go into the whole de dicaryotization thing. I think in one of them, but I can't remember which ones. Yeah, Momo, MSS into BRF. Yes. BRF, like brown rice flour cakes, but that's a different thing than an all-in-one bag. 
all in one bags as far as i understand what they're selling now it's grain and substrate and like i don't think that's a good idea nobody would suggest shooting multi-spore syringes into grain um at least nobody that has experience would suggest that brf is different because brf is brown rice flour caked onto vermiculite that's the pf tech that's a different scenario like shooting mss into like whole grain like uh you know what's going to be spawned is um yeah mss in the whole any kind of whole grain is probably not a good idea and i i think the the all-in-one bags they're they're selling now are the portion of it is like pure grain right and then you mix it up i don't think that's going to work very well but I, I don't know. Maybe somebody, maybe that's what they're doing now. They want to sell you more bags, right? If you fuck it up and you buy more bags, that's like if they sell bags and multi spore syringes, well, you buy more stuff, right? So it's that. I don't, I don't know if they're trying to be that evil, but there there is an advantage for that company to like for you to fuck things up, right? Because you'll buy more stuff. Yeah, Jonathan, all those books are on. Wherever. you can find them they're pretty expensive i think a lot of them are out of print now to be honest so even if you wanted to find them you couldn't find them but they're out in pdf files do, do, do. jason i shot MSN at three all in one bags two have been successful for oh okay so yeah maybe you can <clears throat> maybe you can do it um really it will depend a lot on how pure the spores are and how clean the syringes are um so yeah, hopefully it works out. And this is to green is also sold as an easy way to grow much. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, okay. So as you guys see, so I'm not the only paranoid, like crazy one, right? Yeah, th these these people that sell grain bags and syringes, they're, they want you to fuck up their grain bag so you buy another one yeah and and there is there is one minor thing that everybody seems to have forgotten about you guys technically selling lc is like illegal spores are not illegal so that also might be i know when i first bought spore syringes they were actually lc when i received them from a company in europe i got them here it was obvious straight away that it was lc and when i asked them about it they just kind of like sh like were like yeah 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 whatever like don't talk about it um, that was about two and a half or three years ago. So people have been selling LC for a while. And I know there's some, oh, maybe it's legal. Maybe it's not. It doesn't have the alkaloids, blah, blah. It has the alkaloids. Everybody knows it does. You can, you know, make my purple drizank from spawn. Everybody knows that my ceiling has alkaloids in it. Just whether they can, it has like testable levels. So the company telling you it's MSS may be a way to, remain still 100% illegal. But if they're actually selling you what might be liquid culture, then just, you know, don't bring it up. Uh, so just never, you know, what's that? Never suggest download books you need from your library genesis. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Petri. I'm, I'm sorry to anybody who wants to sell glass or, or buy a glass petri dishes but the other thing you guys is uh they're expensive like a one glass petri dish is like a dollar and a half or two dollars or something like that crazy um do you think gypsum where they did <clears throat> uh aaron that's a good question do i think gypsum is still i think it still might have a place somebody brought it up the other day about how it retains moisture um, and it may help to like, if you put it in your grain spawn, it may kind of suck up some of the free water. It may, I had a bad experience with gypsum. I bought some gypsum and I think it was just like crushed up drywall, <clears throat> you know, the stuff that we use for construction, like in the U S and they just literally like crushed up some drywall and threw it in a bag. And it was like so contaminated that it just messed up my substrate for, for months. And then when I stopped using it, like I was tricking out every every time I made substrate, it was like trick trick after like three days, four days. I was like, "What the hell is going on?" 
And it took me like a month or two. And finally, my friend was like, don't use gypsum. And I stopped using gypsum and my problem went away. <laughs> uh, other additives, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. Bat guano, bat nitro, worm castings. I put worm castings in my last batch of sub and, and yesterday and the day before. I threw away half of the... So I mixed my, my spawn with that sub that had worm castings and I threw away... Almost all of it now. I'm not going to put worm castings or any kind of poo derived stuff. That was for the pants. I think I might, just, I don't even know if I'm interested in pants. So the cube spawn that I mixed with the, with the substrate that had the worm castings in it, it smelled so bad. And several of them already, they had some of that weird green, the dark green molds. I don't, I forgot which one it is. So Derma or septorium or something like that. <clears throat> I'm not I'm not interested in supplementing um, my substrate now. I just stick with CV or just Quar. Um, I can buy huge. Ba my vermiculite is really cheap here. It's like a huge, huge bag. It's like 15 bucks. So I like the way it, it squeezes. Then it, you can push the water out of it. It just has a nice texture to the substrate. And as my friends say, it's shiny. It's pretty. It might get stuck to the bottom of your fruit, but I'll use it. But if I run out of vermiculite, I'll just stop using it. Do -do -do. I'm from Zaire. In the spelling is all. <laughs> it's been A. At the beginning, not E. So Andy, not E. And Andy, is that what you're saying, Andy? I'm not sure, Andy, Andy. Uh, like a long A at the beginning. Sorry about that. Gypsum just helps keep the grains in dirt. Yeah, yeah. Yep, they go call it a dirt bike. That's what I've heard too. I've used it. I didn't really think about why, but I think that's the idea. Yeah, the grains don't stick together. And um, it used to be people thought it helped with the pH, but that was in like compost substrates and stuff like that. That substrate that might have been composted and the pH gets like um like really low. So it gets too acidic and people are like, oh well it buffers the pH and shit like that. Stuff we don't need to worry about in our month-long grows with pretty much neutral quar. We don't need to worry about pH and stuff like that too much. I mean, as long as it's around neutral. Here, here we read it as written. Ah, sorry. Oh, me? Are you talking about the mycology or are you talking about your name? Uh, and I want to cause drama, so feel free to skip over the question, but thoughts on Cubensis crosses. Um, Aaron, is, I, I'm all about drama. <laughs> I, I've talked about this repeatedly. Um, to have a... Uh, Natalensis is a Cubensis. Natalensis is, is just a different... So just like GT and JMF and B+, plus are different kinds of cube, so is Natalensis. Natalensis is just... Uh, a cultigen, a, a strain or whatever you want, a race, natalensis, the best I can figure, or you can use another word called stirps. Uh, it's an older word. It, it's, natalensis is a, um, a type of cubensis, that's all. Just like, you know, just like a Z strain or, a, a, you know, Moby Dick or, a, or whatever, Golden Teacher, they're all just, you know, different types of cubes. So is natalensis. That's, I can... That is what I did my PhD in, is, is what's called the biological species concept. I'm very, 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 very familiar with that, as well as ITS sequencing, which was basically like half of my PhD was on ITS sequencing, uh, as well as morphological species concepts. So these guys don't like me. They will never talk to me about it. Um, I've approached them to like address this question but the fact that you're asking me again it's a marketing thing like what sounds better i want to try this new species and it's a hybrid with a cute so it's the world's first 
hybrid between two species. No, it's not because they're both cubensis. Simple as that. If you saw a dog, if you saw like a Doberman pincher, pincer, whatever, let's say you saw a, a, a Labrador retriever and a poodle, they had a baby together. Would you call that a hybrid? No, they're dogs. They're both dogs, right? You just call that a dog. You call it a Labradoodle, right? There, you wouldn't say, oh, it's a new species. Look, it's a hybrid. No, it's, it's, they're both dogs. You might give it a different name, but you're not going to say, oh, the Labradoodle, that's not, that's a hybrid. No, it doesn't make any sense. It's a marketing thing. It's all just marketing. The, the fact that we're talking about it now is, is that's what they want. They want us to talk about it. Um, I could go on, believe me, like I literally wrote my PhD on the concept of species and their intercompatibility and ITS sequences. I've got like a 350 page document that I'll be happy to forward. Uh, it's, it's online. Um, and they could take, you know, I'm, I'm well versed in this topic. Um, we've tried to approach it, me and Geeky, and like it goes over people's heads like pretty quickly. And so the nitty gritty of like why, why Natalensis is not a different species is, is like, it's a little bit detailed for a lot of people's interest level. No, no. And we're, Reporting sewer from time to America is okay. Spores, yeah, no problem. <clears throat> I send spores. I got like a pile of 10 envelopes right behind me that are going to America tomorrow. I send spores to ev everywhere. Everywhere. Like all the countries that aren't supposed to get them, like I sent them there. <clears throat> There's no worries, man. <clears throat> You'll get them. Uh, the only thing is shipping from here, it takes about three or four weeks. So you will have to be patient, but they always arrive. It's no problem. But for a lot of people like us, you know, you just order them now and then you, you probably got other stuff going around and they'll, they'll show up like three or four weeks later. They, they arrive perfectly fine. Never, ever had a problem. And I've sent off to like hundreds, hundreds of people now. Um, yeah. now Oscar, sorry, I'm going to leave the microscope videos to other people. In fact, like some people got bought microscopes with cameras and they never got around to making the videos. Um, and I'm not going to buy a microscope with a camera just to make videos. Cause like I said, you only really use a microscope for checking for clamp connections. Um, you can use microscope for like looking at other cool stuff and field or you know, identifying mushrooms you might find out in the woods. Um, but there's not a whole lot you use it for. And I'm not going to, if you know what a clamp looks like, like it's, you just got to Google that and then look at it. And so, yeah, I'm not going to focus on making microscopy videos. Do, 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 do. Depraved. Oh yeah, that's the other book. Yeah, thank you, Depraved. That's the other book by somebody. Um, I forgot it's Chang and Miles there. Yeah, that's a good book too. Yeah, my uh, yeah. There you go. So, thank you, guys. You're already asking my questions here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I've been using calcium hydroxide. But yeah, somebody might. Somebody was talking about calcium hydroxide. Don't. Calcium hydroxide is way too basic. I don't know why you're, are you sure? You're not using lime or calcium carbonate. You're using real calcium hydroxide. That is a very, very basic chemical. I, I don't know what it, you, I'm thinking maybe people are getting confused. There's a lot of different limes. There's slate lime, agricultural lime, calcium carbonate, calcium hydroxide. There's crushed lime there's a lot of different kinds of calcium compounds mm. yeah get rid of the gypsum drew just try get rid of it i think a lot of the gypsum is like really really poor quality and it's just like not necessary yeah andy some countries have trouble with uh, the spore swap site. I don't know what, it's just the bank issue. Um, they, it's certain African countries, they have trouble paying also. Um, 
it's just some political thing that it's nothing again it's nothing about sports swaps or anybody it's just the political thing yeah i had to tell my bank when i moved so i have an american bank that i had to tell them like i moved to thailand they the first time i tried to use my atm they completely blocked my everything like i could use my atm card anything and I, I didn't realize I had to tell them. Like, if you ever travel internationally, make sure you tell your bank that you're going to travel because otherwise they'll block your card. And if you're stuck in, like, Vietnam, like I was, like, and you don't have cash and you can't use your card and, like, you're going to have a problem. Like, yeah, just tell your bank that you're traveling. If you're going to if you're gonna plan on using your bank card, um, yeah, make sure you tell your bank. Yep. There you go. Thank you, Andy, for the confirmation. Yeah, I've sent off to so many people now. I, I know why you'd be worried about it. And here's the thing, especially if you're not like I usually send extras to. Um, if you order like two swab sets, I'll at least put in two more. Like I'm going to put just one swab, like, you know, like instead of two swabs, I'll put it one swab of Moby Dick and another swab of Albino JMF or something like that. Um, just so you can have more because I've got so many things now and they're like um yeah like i'm not too bothered like nobody's ever gonna like have all the stuff there's so many things out there now right i can't even keep up nobody can keep up oh yes okay Andy. yes oh so now i'm now I'm more confused andy because i don't know the way you say see americans say the andes mountains but I don't know how you say Andy's mountains. My brother's name is Andy too. So. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. Aaron, yeah, but you know who's calling Natalensis? Look who's call. There's a there's a, a factions in this. There's a lot of tribalism in this. Um, I was kicked out of several groups because I disagreed with their little paradigm and their business model i was i've been kicked out of so many groups at this point not because i was being an ass or anything just because they didn't want me like speaking the truth and telling people correct information so i was removed from many groups that's kind of why i'm doing this because i figured like nobody can kick me off my own youtube channel i guess <laughs> that's it what does it mean if I put two different cultivars? Again, I'm not really sure. Super Daddy V Tech, what do you mean cultivars? You're coming from the weed world, right? We don't call them cultivars in the cube world. Um, they won't fuse together unless they are monocaryons. And I'm not sure. Putting them together is not going to help. Mm, it probably means that one of them took over. I, I don't know what you're doing, Super Daddy. <laughs> yeah, I, I know a bit about, I know a lot about other mushrooms too. I just like happen to specialize in the cubes. There's a lot of people that, to be honest, know more about cubes than me. I just have a like sort of more well-rounded mycological. I started like studying mushrooms when I was like a child, you know. Uh, and I really, really got into it when I was in uh, my teenage years, and then it's just continued since then. Bill, um, I was asked to speak at a few talks. Uh, problem is, I don't like. Flying back to the U.S. costs about $1,300 now. It might be even more. Um, and there's a problem with that, too, is if I say what I'm saying right now in particular venues, <clears throat> there are some rather prominent, well-known people that disagree. Uh, they have different agendas than me. My agenda is to give free, accurate information to anybody in the world who wants to listen to it. Some of the other people they want to sell stuff. The only thing I sell is spores. And the only reason I sell spores is to be honest, you know why I started is because 
I don't have PayPal. So long story short, I had to get a PayPal account with my friend in America because that was the only way I could order spores is through PayPal. And now it's Venmo and Zelle and whatever. But I got, I basically wanted to sell spores so I could get money in her account. So I could use her account to buy spores from other vendors. That was about two years ago. And now it, it turned into this, like, I mean, I don't sell that much stuff. Um, and I, I don't make any money of it because that money all still goes into her account. <laughs> so it's a little bit, I could, uh, it's a long and complicated story. It goes to a good cause, but technically I don't really get the money that, from my spores, which I pay for the postage. I pay for the envelopes. I pay for the, <laughs> but, uh, is, is a long story. It, it's, there's like a, like other things. It's one of my, yeah, my good, good, good friends from a long time ago who needs help. Um, so she's also a veteran and all this stuff. So I can, so I'll be honest, she's a veteran. Uh, she's like, uh, has medical, like she's disabled and just like all stuff. See, I don't, I don't, I don't like to go that route. Like, I don't like using that, like, oh, this money is going to a good cause. Blah, blah, blah. I don't like doing that shit. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely. I love. I like thinking about things that you guys ask me because I uh, some things I I just I don't really think about a lot of this stuff. A good cake collected. You'd be doing videos. That would be awesome. Somebody out there who's better at editing and who has a microscope with a camera on it needs to do some videos. Um, I I really hope cake collected. You're gonna you're going to make good on your word because I know at least four other people and I'm not going to say their names. They were like, I got a microscope. I'm going to make a bunch of videos. And then they, that was like six months ago. When you start looking through the camera, I mean, Gary from Fresh Cap, uh, no, what is that? Is Gary, the guy is it Fresh Cap. Yeah. He's got some microscope videos, but um, they don't really apply to like cubes. And like I said, there's really like all you're really gonna do with cubes is look for plant connections. Uh, so I'm not sure if there's a big necessary. You no, know, there really is a huge, huge like gap that needs to be filled for microscopy videos. Because people that have microscopes probably already know how to use them. I don't know. So I I just gave up on it. Uh, do his food grade to boot to Buster on the way that that is. Uh, and you're serious, what's your best practice between flushes? I, yeah, I resaturate. I actually soak. So I take my shoe boxes and I harvest. And then I sometimes take a fork and I, I turn the fork like sideways and kind of rub off the, the little baby ones that, you know, they're boards or whatever this stuff. And I try to get a smooth surface. And then I put two water bottles to hold the cake down. And then I pour water in my shoe box, let it sit for about two or three hours. And then I take off the bottles and I, Put my hand on the cake and just dump out the excess water and then i put it back in the tin that's what i do uh with my shoe box i can use only get two i get two flushes i could get a third but i don't bother they're pretty pretty like gnarly they're still like chewed up by the time the third flush after all the soaking and you know, <laughs> flushing and whatnot the draining i guess so I'm using my do I have to use I don't know weed grinder. Uh, I don't want to comment on soil amendments uh, or media uh, additives or substrate additives. I don't really know. That's I don't use them. So somebody else might have more experience. Um, and do I have to use calcium carbonate? Again, I don't know why you're using calcium carbonate. So people have been talking about calcium carbonate and calcium hydroxide. I don't know why you're using them to begin with for cubes. I don't know why, why you're using those additives. You must have some different kind of, you're not using CV, I guess you're using manure. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm not a, I'm not a professional about manure and other substrates. I, yeah, Colorado, that's why I'm confused. Azomite and calcium carbonate are different things. So I, I don't know why, why you're, asking about the same thing as a mic different than calcium carbonate and i don't really know why you're using either of them so 
<laughs> yeah, spear cat. Yeah, I got stuck in Vietnam once and then in Burma once because I when I went to Burma, they wouldn't use my Thai bank. I thought it was okay because Burma's uh Myanmar, whatever they call it now, um is like right next door. So I didn't think but my Thai bank got blocked. Uh so I could I didn't have I had like a hundred dollars for like two days. Yeah, it was horrible. It was really, really, really horrible. Thank goodness we had uh, our plane tickets back, but we literally I was down to like my last five dollars to get to the airport. It sucked badly. Yeah, um, Jason, go to sportswaps.com. That's where, that's where the, and you have to go to like Doctor Ed's. Oh, I think here I got it. I think I got it actually up on my. Uh, I think I got it here somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. So yeah, I'm not <clears throat> you know, I'm not trying to push my stuff too hard, you guys, but I know if you search for it, it'll like it doesn't it doesn't come up sometimes. I don't know why. It's like it won't um I don't know why it's it's not I don't have the right there's something the uh, SEO or something like that. I have to put some keywords in it, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, nobody, nobody wants to hear the truth. I, uh, I've had some pretty heated debates. I get like personal messages from, I don't want to say their names, but you guys can guess who. Like I get personal like messages from them that are like sometimes not very nice. Like a borderline like threatening, like, like you'll be ostracized and like you'll, You'll be a leper. To be honest, about a year ago, I was quite like, it's like, oh, we're going to hunt you down. Well, like, you'll never be able to post in another Facebook group or another Discord ever again. Like, literally like a witch hunt. Like, oh, you better be scared. I was like, fuck you guys. Like, whatever. Those people, some of them are assholes. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying anybody in particular. Some of those... <laughs> Some of those people, I mean, they're they're gangsters. When are you you don't fuck with people's money, right? That's when they start to get angry. When you start fucking with people's bag, that's when they start getting angry. Uh, luckily, I live in a different country, so I'm not too bothered. But I'd be a little more worried if I lived there. <laughs> yeah, well, let's make a own. I'm try. Let's go. Get it. Yeah, thank you. Fresh from the farm punch. I that's it, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, he's got uh I wish I really wish Gary would just start talking about cubes. He seems to know a lot about mushrooms, but you know, he's got a proper business to run, so uh yeah, Drew, the microscope L C D thing. That's the thing. Like I haven't seen a good camera on a microscope that projects well on the computer. I just don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Andy and Nap. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to. It's twelve thirty. Maybe I'll go another half hour. Cause I'm really a little bit worried about my neighbors. Like I, I gotta. That's the only thing I forgot when I started this. I don't know how. how I don't know how loud I am. Like inside the headphone. <laughs> like he's there, like next door, trying to sleep. Like what the fuck is that guy going over there? He's talking about fucking mushrooms again. Pete Moss, um, Pete Moss has become ecologically unfriendly and it's quite expensive where I am here. I wouldn't use Pete Moss in your substrate unless you have a very cheap source of it. You can look in the Stamets books. Uh, for, there's a bunch of stuff in there and, and all the old stuff. Yeah, it probably does help with the fungus gnats and things. I think it's also like antibacterial and stuff. The problem is it's expensive now and it's become like quite environmentally like unfriendly to harvest peat moss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the, alg I don't know, man. I just showed a harvest video today. I, I don't know why the algorithm isn't picking this thing up, but it's not. Although I did, I didn't notice last time I said MF, like, you know, mother B. And it, it like, 
cut because I said like, like mom, I said it really enthusiastic and like halfway past hearing the M it like cut and the, the ta upper, like it bleeped back before it uploaded the, um, the CC and the, like the audio file, it like bleeped that like the ucker, you know, the MF ucker, like it bleeped that part out or it didn't bleep it. It just like went real quiet. It like it, it was like dead silent. So they, they pick up on some of the curse words. I don't know why, but I don't know. I don't even know. I live in a different country guys. Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter since I'm over in a different country. I have no clue. <laughs> Yeah, if you got cheap peat moss, I didn't even know it was like a bad thing, but apparently I've seen some YouTube videos about the horrible now, and it releases methane and carbon to the atmosphere or something like that. I know. Uh, my brother's in the wind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the games all my yeah. I, I don't want to push my neighbors. They've been pretty cool so far. Like, I, I don't really want to make a problem with my neighbors. Although I think I'm actually speaking quite low. Um, especially at microscope for crossing strains. Yeah, the uh, Amscope B120, right? Uh, Northwoods. <clears throat> it's the Amscope B120. That's like the standard now. It's like 250 bucks. Um, I wouldn't get anything cheaper. Uh, Northwoods. I wouldn't get anything cheaper. You'll be disappointed if you buy a, a really, really cheap microscope. It's gonna that you can't use. Like it's it's pointless, right? Because it's gonna be garbage. So you might as well buy a nicer one. And a, a good microscope will last you for the rest of your life. You know. Maybe your kids or your brother or your niece or nephew might want to get into something with a microscope. Uh, the B120C is all you need. It's it's 250 bucks, but it's a decent scope. It's not like a P, it's not like one of those plastic pieces of crap, you know, you buy it like some toy, the toy barn or whatever. It's a nice scope. It's actually a good scope. Um, and when you, yeah, it's got a thousand X oil immersion. It's got 400 X, which you'll use for the, the clamps. And it's got the, um, the hundred X and then the 40. So you multiply it by the eyepiece. And I think some of them, they actually have a 10 X ocular eyepiece and a 25 X. So it'll actually go up to like shift. It'll go up to like 2,500 X, I think. But you don't need that much. You only need a thousand X. If you're gonna measure spores or look at spores, you only need a thousand X, which is a hundred on the objective and then uh, ten on the eye, so that makes it a, a thousand. Yeah, shoe boxes. Don't, you don't need to soak them more than three hours. Yeah, and I've heard that too. Okay, yeah, I'd rather it's just twenty four hours. Don't do that. You, you'll they'll go anaerobic, like especially if you have them completely under the water, they'll go anaerobic and they'll die. I've noticed that even like overnight, like eight hours, especially because maybe the shoe boxes are you know, that much. There's like if you push them down, you you suffocate the fungus. They'll just die. So then when you try to fruit them again, they'll just nothing grows because you killed everything. I, I think three hours, if it's like a CV substrate, three hours is more than enough. That's like perfect. Also, if it's at night, you know, you might forget about them in the morning. If I soak them at night and I'm in a hurry in the morning and you're off to work and then you get to work and realize, oh, shit, my shoe boxes are still soaking. Like, it's better to do it, you know, the same day, same night, you know, soak them for before dinner and then put them back in the tent after dinner. Yeah, that 24 hours again. I don't know where people get these these numbers from. I got a feeling they like they're not very experienced cultivators when they say something like that. It's like, why 24 hours? Like it's not gonna soak up any more water, right? The three hours, it's like it, it's not gonna soak up anymore, right? <laughs> okay. Longer length videos tend to show up more in the algorithm more than the yeah. So I um, don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Do do do. Welcome to Ice Four Green Table Exercise Space. Yeah, Green Table. A lot of people do that. I think I heard you talking about that on your other your guys' podcast, right? Um, yeah, you can just spray the hell out of it too. I just find the yum. I like to kind of clean it because when I harvest a lot of the substrate, it's kind of like dirt stuff. You know, it's like crumbly, and I just I just kind of like washing it off. <laughs> like to be honest. So the soak, the washing, soaking, I usually kind of give it a couple of rinses and so it looks like a little more neat. But you can spray the hell out of it. Like if you got a mono tub, mono tubs are going to be hard to soak, right? So mono tubs, I heard somebody, I forgot who they, they'll like flood the mono tub and then they actually drill holes in the bottom to like let the water drain out. I don't know. Then that's a lot of like, you're going to have to plug it. You could, like, I guess, tape over the holes, like, with scotch tape next time. I don't know. Some, some DIY person out there has probably had a better way to figure it out. That's why I kind of like shoe boxes. Monotubs are too much substrate for me to deal with, and they're heavy, and I don't like it. hurts my back picking them up. Do, 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 do. Yeah, like Northwoods, you can do 24 hours if you want. I just don't really see, like, why it's necessary. Seems like an excessive amount of time. Yeah, injecting cake, too. I've done that, or bags. Just get, like, a. have gotten a 50cc syringe and just injected them with water. Um, there's another thing. Some people will put peroxide in the water, like a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, uh, and inject your cakes with, with like, water that has a tiny, I mean, I'm talking like drops of a couple drops of peroxide in like, you know, maybe like a half a liter of water, like a, like a quart of water. I don't know if, if your cake's already infected with something like it's probably done. So if you're just trying to, uh, trying to like get a couple more flushes out of it, I don't know if it's infected with something already. Yeah, Northwoods, you're right. Mushrooms are 90% water. The problem is you, you're trying to soak up water into the substrate, not the mushroom, like they're not. So the substrate itself, like, I don't think is going to absorb much more water. Like quar, if you're using quar and vermiculite, like after three hours, I don't think it, like it's saturated already. For me, it's more of a practical thing. I don't want to remember 20, like, so something that would have taken me a couple hours now has turned into two days, right? Like if I have a bunch of shoe boxes and I have to store them in the sink or in the shower and I got to wait a full 24 hours, like, okay, I need to shower, right? Like I used to live in a smaller place. And so I would put my tubs in the shower. So now I can't shower, right? <laughs> So I've got monotubs in my shower and I can't shower now. So that means I can't take a shower for 24 hours because my monotubs are in there, right? So for me, it was a practical thing. If you have an area that you can let them sit for 24 hours, I guess that's good. But my area was, is either my shower or my kitchen sink. And I don't want shoeboxes sitting in my kitchen sink for like 24 hours. It's just, a, it's just a practical thing, you know. Oh, acoustic. Well, are you talking about that noise cancellation? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, like, kit out my bedroom wall with acoustic foam, you guys. I'm not going to be, like, cutting any, like, you know, rhymes and DJing anything in here. I think I'm talking low enough, to be honest. I don't know if there's a room. I think that... Oh, if I remember correctly, that's a hallway on the other side of this wall. It's not a, it's not somebody's room. I'm pretty sure it's a hallway, actually. If I think about it, it is a hallway. Because the front door goes straight back and it's a hallway. So, yeah, no worries. It's very useful. Yeah, no milk, just OJ. He's going to spark yeah, Stamets, uh, he's got actually several. He's got the mushroom cultivator, which is the blue one, or it used to be blue. He's got growing gourmet and medicinal mushrooms. So GGMM, it's so one of them, the TMC is the mushroom cultivator. It gets abbreviated, or acronym, acronymized. Uh, MMGG, which is uh, medicinal mushrooms and gourmet growing or something like that. And then, or, or 
Yeah, something like that. And then there's another one, uh, a third one, Mycelium Running, I think, that has a bit about cultivation, but it's got other stuff in it too. Um, to be honest, though, so Stamets books, number one, he doesn't really talk about cubes. And number two, he sort of, it's geared towards more of a like medium scale actual mushroom farm. It's not really geared towards like a home cultivator, like a cube cultivator. It's definitely more of like, the composting and like material flow and like how to like set up a lab and things like that, especially the mushroom cultivator, which is the one you're probably referring to. That was the first mushroom cultivation book I bought also. And I found it, uh, it's very much like it's overwhelming for a beginner. Um, unless you have some prior experience either with farming or agriculture, like some of the words, um, Like you, you might not know, like if you're not familiar with the process of composting and you read like a whole chapter on composting and turning compost and aeration and whatnot, like that's not going to make any sense to you, but they're good books. Uh, they're just, I think a little bit more advanced. Well, I know they're more advanced than most cube cultivators like have a background for, but they're free now, right? They're on the internet. So. Yes, Colorado, I have grown snake. Uh, uh, have you ever had red wet rot? I'm not sure what red wet rot is. Your problem, is that a bacterial thing? So the common names for diseases, I'm not really sure, to be honest. People use different names. If you could come up with a, a like the actual name of the fungus, I don't I'm not really sure what red wet rot is. I'm sure, I'm assuming it'd be a bacterial thing because it's wet rot. I don't know. I don't like bags. Uh, I don't really like bags. Just I don't I don't know. I just I don't. I'm not a bag person. Whatever. If you if everybody loves bags, that's fine. I'm just not a bag person. Do you think brands of core? Yes. Yes, Northwoods for sure. Different types of core are way, way different. Mine, even the different company, it's the same exact company, like from one month or what, like I, I usually get core about once a month or once every two months, I order enough, the five kilo blocks. And I usually get like three or four or five kilo blocks is different every time. Same company, same seller, same box, same packaging, everything. It's very different. Very, very different. Yeah. And they do soak up different and, and I have to adjust my vermiculite. And, and it's like, it's these people who are like, Oh, bucket tech, 650 grams of quar and get three quarts of water. And that, like, that's the recipe. No, that's not, that's somebody who hasn't really like grown very many mushrooms because they don't realize that not every bag of quar is exactly the same. Uh, after you get a little more experience, you'll start to realize there's a lot of variables that you may need to adjust for. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a lot of mushroom growers that don't shower quick. <laughs> I had one of my friends, I, he's had like the, the weekend off and yeah, he's been like drinking all weekend and I don't think he showered at all. I was sitting across from a picnic table with him last night and I was like, Jesus, dude, like you need to really like, um, I, I'm glad you're going back to work tomorrow. I hope you shower before you go back to work. <laughs> I can smell you. <laughs> yeah, you boozer. We're talking about the calcium hydroxide again. Um, yeah, it would fight off contamination um, because it's extremely basic like to the point where it might damage your skin. Yes. Uh, lots of things that are extremely basic or alkali are gonna fight off contamination. They'll also like burn your skin. I, I don't know where people are getting calcium hydroxide from. And that might go back to somebody like, I don't know. I, I would like, as far as I know, calcium hydroxide has no place in a cube substrate recipe. Um, if somebody can give me some kind of reference to that or something like, 
<clears throat> like when just some people claim, I don't know, or some people say, like, I don't know, people say lots of stuff. It's not right. Uh, yeah. T oh, there you go, Chief. Tub. Da -da <laughs> Tubs in a tub. I don't have a tub. But it would be like shoeboxes in a shower. Yeah, that's again if you if you're growing with your with your misses and your kids and you're like you know hydrating tubs in your tub like you're not going to be very friendly or popular. Uh, yeah, Andy, good good point. Don't wash your tubs or mono tubs or anything with that scratchy side of a Scotch Bright. We call it Scotch Brights here, um, or a, like use the soft sponge. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll it'll like make scratches in it. Yeah, that's that's very good advice, and it's also easy to grab that because they sell sponges here on one side, on the other side, it's like a scouring pad. It's very easy to like accidentally grab the wrong side. And... <laughs> good. <laughs> my first... <laughs> hey, Jesse, my first girl showed nodding. Thanks. Oh, good. Help, I help. Uh, I was just curious. Never heard of. Asking, not telling you that you need to use them. Uh, not sure what you're referring to, Jew. True. Jew. <laughs> True. Uh, the old Stamets book has mentioned spraying the sub with one point. Yeah, I don't know. In the old Stamets book? No milk, 1.5 per Uh I'm not familiar with that part of the book. And the old Stamets book, there's like three old Stamets books. They're all like 20 years old now. I, I'm not familiar with that part of the book. Maybe it's there, but the books are big. I, I don't know. Like that could just be, um, what do you say? Like hearsay? I've never, like, I'm not familiar with that. I don't know why with cubes, why are you, why are people so worried about starting a flush? You're going to wait one or two more days. You should just wait. Just wait, you guys. Don't leave people that worry about this one or two day window where you're supposed to start your flush and then you get really, really nervous. I've got like 10 things sitting in my tent now. I thought they would have flushed by now, but they haven't. Yeah, I'm a little bit wondering why they haven't, but I'm not going to go start spraying peroxide in there or <laughs> just let it go, man. It's been a little cold. I've been running my air conditioner a lot for the last four days. Like, it's been cold in here, so maybe that's why they're not flushing, you know? I don't know. There's a lot of different reasons. Try not to think about it too much. They'll pop up one day. Do, do, do. Yeah, what is that? So, uh, adding verm to popcorn spawn? Yeah, that's, uh, the verm helps, like, keep, you know, the more, it kind of aerates it. Yeah, that's, yeah, I had trouble with popcorn spawn. It'll, it seems to, like, the popcorn stays wet or something what i did with my popcorn spawn was i put a piece of tissue in there just like like not kleenex but you know like hand tissues i just put like a couple pieces of tape uh hand towels in there and like soak that extra water up but verm would work good too <laughs> yeah northwoods that that quarry yeah it's it's it varies all the time i I gotta look at it every time I get it. It just varies a lot. So there's something new for me and everything the green is. Okay, Chief uh let's do something. Okay. Yeah, Chief. Again, I don't know, like a lot of times people bring these things up and then they not surprisingly never find a reference to it it's sometimes it starts with like a rumor and maybe somebody miss under it's like the the telephone game you know it changes every time it goes through another person it changes a little bit and then you find out or it could have just been pure misinformation could have been somebody being an asshole <laughs> thanks ice machine the de, 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 de. Kyle Butterfly P wine. I think he brought that up last time. Yeah, it works really well. Do, 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 do. Straw pasteurization. Oh, okay. Now see, okay. So quake. Now we're 
So now you're talking about straw. This is so I have heard of straw and calcium hydroxide, but you're changing. You, the, this, this is what we're referring to. We're talking about you're changing the thing. I have heard calcium hydroxide in straw, but we were talking about quar, not straw. <laughs> so, so you get, so this is what I mean. That you're not, you're changing the rules. So yeah, quar and straw are not the same thing. Yes, there are well-established ways of using lime, which is slaked lime or calcium hydroxide. There are well-established protocols for using that to pasteurize straw. Chemical pasteurization, not quar. Right? So again, you are changing the rules. I have, I'm very familiar with it. It's by a guy and I can't, there's a bunch of YouTube videos about it. Uh, and they use it in Africa a lot for, for using um, calcium hydroxide with straw, not quar. Okay, there you go. You booze are one of the most popular bucket tech videos. Yeah, okay. So is that bucket tech with quar or straw? Uh, and I don't know, you guys, you're, you're going on conjecture and what other people may or may not have said, but I'm not going to comment on it because I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, the TMC, no milk, just OJ, the TMZ is, it's a big, like, pretty, pretty heavy duty book. It's fascinating. I still read it. So that's the thing, even after, like, studying mycology for, you know, 30 years, I still go back to the mushroom cultivator and occasionally read parts of it. There's a nice key at the end for mushroom contaminants in one of the appendices. I think it's one of appendix B. There's a list of, of different um, mushroom contaminants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Drew, no fiddle with calcium hydroxide. That Yeah, that's good because you've written the formula wrong. It's CaOH sub 2 with the hydroxide in parents. <laughs> um, uh, look at your live she's it. Yeah, the microphone, but thank you, Brandon. Uh, you got it, Brandon. You got to look under the tab that says live. I just figured this out like last week myself. There's those tab that says videos and then like three over there's one that says live. And this will go up there automatically. But I noticed last time it took about an hour. It's got to go to their algorithm or whatever. Um, and then it'll be up like an hour. And it also takes longer. It took like several hours for the, the chat to show up. Like the video was there and then the chat took like several more hours to show up. Probably just going through there, make sure, you know, there's no weird, stupid, dumb shit. Saying. Yeah, use a bit of wood pellets at the bottom of my cream. Yeah, yeah, ice machine, good idea. Put something like, yeah or wood pellets or something there to like you know soak up that little bit of extra water that might like before you pressure cook it right like don't you know just something like a little buffer maybe you know because it can't be you can't hurt wood pellets you know there'll just be some something in there to kind of soak up any yeah that's the big thing with grain spawn guys if you don't have your grain hydrated and it's it's overly wet and then you pressure cook it and it's got free water it's going to go bacterial that's why it's strange after all the years, the most important thing about growing any kind of mushrooms is getting your grain cooked right. So a lot of times people suggest in these like flash preps and stuff, I'm just like, no, 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 no. Cause you have to cook your grain, right? If your grain is not cooked properly to the right hydration level, it's not gonna sterilize correctly. It's not gonna support the mycelium growth and it's not gonna give you the yields that you want, right? And if it's overly hydrated, it's just so many problems all start from bad spawn. And bad spawn starts from badly cooked grain. So there's a reason why these huge mushroom growers, they have companies that specifically make spawn. Like that's all they do all day long is they make spawn. They don't grow mushrooms. They don't mix substrate. They just make spawn. Like that's all they do, like Amicel and my, my whatever those are. Uh, those companies that's like all they do is make spawn uh, because they they don't want to fuck it up 
Cardboard as a substrate, yeah, again, back to the moisture thing, go for it, cyanocins, <clears throat> the azurous, azurocins and whatever. That, uh, <clears throat> that you know, that whole complex of wood lovers, they'll use, yeah, you can use cardboard. I did it once. Uh, it doesn't work very well. I wouldn't suggest it unless you're really, really, really super poor and you can't afford quar. I wouldn't use cardboard, kind of wasted time. It's a waste of spawn. If you've got good spawn and you're going to use cardboard as your sub, like it's kind of stupid because you're wasting your spawn. Um, if you're doing it as like a science project, that's okay. But if you've got good cube spawn and you're going to use cardboard for the sub, it's kind of silly because you're going to waste good spawn. <clears throat> Maybe. Maybe the next... Uh, <clears throat> the next live stream I'll call it Michael Mythbuster. Myth yeah, I'll have to say it like spell it like you did so I don't uh that's how like Thai people would say it too. Myth Mythbuster. They can't really do diphthongs like myth. Like they don't have a the uh, sound, so it'll be like myth butter. I don't, I don't know, Chief, you had red rot in it or something. I, I, I mean, I don't know what red rot is. I, I've never actually heard of anything called red rot. Generally, if it, so it sounds like you're, you had something and then you're trying to kill it off and then re-inoculated it. I, I've tried that before. I've tried reusing um, like substrate, like oyster, like straw that I use to grow oysters. I've tried using it for other mushrooms. It's kind of a waste of time. Um, usually by the time one fungus has gotten done with it, especially if it's a saprobic fungus, they've eaten up all the sugars and the readily available carbohydrates. And so getting another fungus, like a succession of fungus, that happens in nature, but it takes years. Um, and then bacteria and things involved. So doing it with like two species or the same species of fungus, I think is kind of like, hmm, kind of waste of time. Oh, Quake, I'm sorry. Your questions and your responses are disjointed and there's like other things between them. I can't keep track of uh, the line of your whole, um, thing, your whole train of thought. I'm just reading these things one line at a time. So. Uh, Jason, no, I, I'm on a bunch of discords. I don't, I have no interest in running a discord. I have enough problem keeping up with the social media, like Facebook and IG. I'm on a bunch of discords, but I, I don't know, unless somebody asks me or calls me out by name, I don't really like, I don't browse the discords. There's too much stuff going on there. Yeah, just see the Caprice on uh, liquid culture. It, I'm sure it would work. But again, I'm not really sure why you would do it. Because you can't see inside a Capri Sun bag, as far as I know. I would rather do it <clears throat> in a clear, clear jar. Yeah, I'm sure it would work. It's sugar water. Uh, it would work, I'm sure. I just don't know why you would do it. Yeah, I typed it wrong, so you write it. Um, yeah, Andy, I do use the same name for all social networks. You can find me very easily on any of the social media. Some people are always asking, like, where do I find you? I'm like, I don't know everywhere the same name. A lot of people have, like, three different handles or three different aliases or pseudonyms. I don't. I just have all one. So, yeah, I don't have any, like, trade names or company names. It's all this my name. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, see, uh, that's a like question that people ask all the time. 
Uh, just get it some kind of cheap tea or beef stuff. Anything in that in that sort of lineage? Just uh, don't don't do an albino. Don't. Um, although the leukistics, the the AA plus, the albino A plus, even though it's leukistic, and uh, uh, Moby Dick, Moby Dick, and I, I had another one. It's Great White Monster. I just fruited like last month. That was pretty nice too. But uh, albino A plus, uh, AA plus, or um, which is a leukistic. By you, by the way, you guys, the right way to say it is is leukistic, like with a hard K. A lot of people say leucistic. That's that's not so. When you, you've heard of leukemia, right? The bone marrow disease. It's like leukemia, right? It's a disease of the white blood cells in your bone marrow. So we don't say leukemia, right? It's leukemia. So it should be leukistic, right? Not leucistic. There is not a C. It's a K sound. Sorry, just. That that's what I'm pretty pretty sure on the way you say agar auger. <laughs> the the way you want to say agar auger tomato tomato basil basil, that's okay, but it's leukistic. I'm a hundred percent certain on that. Like leukocytes are white blood cells. Nobody says leucocytes. <laughs> Uh, hope it doesn't upset anybody, but yeah, Jesse, just pick. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Just don't pick an albino or a PE thing. The albino is because they'll get pseudomonas like bacterial blotch, uh, and and the other thing is like <clears throat> the PE varieties like Melmac and stuff, they just take a long time to grow. That's it. Like PE varieties, they'll take you'll be sitting there staring at them for like a month, and you'll be like, "What did I do wrong?" And then they'll find the pop up, and there'll be some weird blob or some shit. Just get like a GTB plus one of those types of things, and just pick one that your friends know. So when you grow it, you'll be like, "Oh, look, these are my gold teachers." Like, don't pick some weird shit, you know, pseudo truck spot forty six nine dash two or whatever. Like, just pick some shit people will know, recognize. Otherwise, nobody will want to eat it. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, DKC, you're on like a bunch of shit, dude. You must have. I see you everywhere. You must be on like. You must have like some massive computer complex or something. That you got like fifty screens running. You're like mod modding and all that stuff, and I don't even know how you do that. But Jesus Christ, he dudes in like three places at the same time. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, you guys hit the like button. I, can't hit that. <laughs> I always forget that. Uh, okay, well, I'll be going so I can take that. How is it going? Um, Chief, I'm, I don't, I'm not really sure what you're referring to. Oh, yeah, Jess. Just had a, yeah, A plus man. I, I like that one too. It can, it, I most of the most of the time it's just a good size mushroom, and it looks cool. It's nice, pretty white, but it's got some a little bit of color to the cap. Um, it's not, it's yeah. So that's why it's leukistic. It's not a, not like really super albino. And it has dark spores, and so you can also make prints of it, which is nice. It's good to start out with something you can like make prints of and that way you can practice your printing and you can you know when you swab it if you're going to do that it looks it's like really straightforward it's not like oh transparent spores or hyaline spores and you got to swab it no, no you just take an aa plus and you just chop it off and put it on a fucking piece of foil and there you got a spore print <laughs> not none of this fancy shit like swabbing it at the right time and all that like no uh mm -hmm. Ha, DKC. <laughs> Dude, they text some shit. I reviews that one Google link that for leukistic. No, did you just came in? So you've heard of the disease leukemia, right? Leukemia is the disease of white blood cells. Leuko means white. 
like if you ever see l e u k o or l e u c o you're gonna say it the same way luco not luso <laughs> nobody ever says it that way oh do they have clear bottoms yeah i haven't drank capri sun in literally like 40 years probably <laughs> like now maybe 35 um, they don't sell that. They do sell similar things here, but I, I would just use a mason jar to make your LC. Um, oh, yeah. Or quake the, the Latin names. I've heard people around the world say the Latin names of mushrooms in many, with their made, many, many native languages and the way a Russian, a Chinese, a Spanish person. Way an American, the way a British, they're all different. But leukistic is one that is not really like open to interpretation. Like next time you go to the doctor, tell them like, oh, I think I, I want to know about leukemia. And they'll be like, what? And then, oh, can you check my uh my my white blood count, my leucocytes? They'll be like, what? Leucocytes? What are those? If you say leukocytes, they'll be like, oh, white blood cells. If you say leucocyte to a doctor, they're going to be like, what the fuck is that? So for some reason, why, why do we need it? Why do we change it? Like leukistic means white colored. Just like leukemia and leukocytes. Uh, anywho. <laughs> Let's see. Clear bottom to open and do one thing. Basil, basil. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, it's a Capri Sun LC. That be, they go start selling that shit. <laughs> That's how you can ship it through the mail. They won't. They won't catch you. <laughs> it's not Capri Sun. Uh, it's maybe please, but, oh Jesus, ice machine. You make me read this shit. Oh, I know this paper. Stability of the four. Okay, what's the uh, in biomass negative for day? Really sums up the title. Current degradation. Super dry, the simple, and dark. Temperature. Uh, yeah. There's some. There's a problem with that paper. They they um they wrote something in one of the. So, yeah. So ice machine. I'm not really sure. Um. I don't want to go into some scientific paper. I have that paper sitting right there. Um, unless you want to address something specifically, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into that. The genetic inheritance in mushrooms is quite similar to snake breeding. I have yeah, the snake breeding people like jumped over to the mushrooms like pretty easy. Yeah, it's kind of the same idea of breeding everything. You know, roses, snakes, or or whatever. It's, it's like all the same. It's all the same idea. It's Mendelian genetics. But there's a lot of parts of Mendelian. There's a lot of traits, especially when you're dealing with a, a mushroom that has relatively few phenotypic characters to, like, see. Except for something like, oh, it's albino. No, it's a brown one. It's like, like, there's something between brown and white. But, like, how do you, like, how do you determine that? Um, maybe not. Uh, yeah, these people, Ice Machine, they say in that paper that the degradation that they reported in that paper doesn't make any sense. For anybody who has practical experience with storing dried mushrooms, I've eaten personally mushrooms that were three years old, stored cracker dry in silica gel, not even vacuum packed, and they were still as potent as the day I stored them. Uh, this inert gas thing, I don't know where you're coming up with that. If that paper is the reason if why you're talking about using argon, that is not, uh, that's not going to prove anything. That's one paper. So you're, you're saying one paper versus three or four decades of people's experience who have known, grown, and sold cubes for three decades. All of a sudden you're saying, no, they were doing it all wrong. You're also going against thousands of years of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, 
do you think a like Chinese medicine store, like using herbal medicine, selling ginseng or whatever they sell herbs, do you think they're using argon inert gases to store their herbs? Probably not, right? This doesn't make any sense, this argon thing. It's like the newest little craze, like freeze drying and whatnot. Like, I don't understand it. If people thought about it, it doesn't really make any sense. And if that's the paper you're using to justify everybody storing their dried mushrooms in argon, it's, it's that's not that silly. Do, 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 DKC, yeah, I know. I know half you guys are probably stoned. Don't worry about it. I, to be honest, I had, I had to turn down some weed last night because I was like, shit, man, I don't want to get up. Like the four or five days ago, I got so baked off this, like two hits off this joint this dude had, man. I was like fried for like three hours. Like I got to do stuff later. <laughs> yeah, Jesse, feed corn, yeah, it works great. It's just got to be clean. It'll have like probably more dirt, rocks and shit in it. Do, do, do. Oh, you're oh, the leucistic. Oh, Dupree. No, that's funny you say that, Dupree, because I wasn't making fun of you, but there was a very, very well-respected person. Uh, there's like three very, very well-respected people who say it that way. <laughs> and that maybe hopefully they don't catch wind of what I just said there. <laughs> so we like, fuck it. Um, I don't know. Uh, you can say it, tomato, tomato, whatever. I still say, I used to say auger. Believe it or not, I used to say auger. Uh, auger, like the shit you would drill a hole in the fucking ice, you know, like the drill bit thing. Auger. Uh, I still say that occasionally. I still like it. I still like to say auger, but I shouldn't say it too many times. Agar, auger, agar, agar. I don't even know how I say it now, to be honest. Uh, but as we are, I have the crib. It's good. Good, good, good. Be nice over the back. Taiwan. Uh, yeah, Brandon. That's, I'm in Thailand, not Taiwan, brother. Speaking of pronunciation, <laughs> Thailand is not Taiwan. <laughs> I didn't know that till like probably about like four or five years before I moved here, I met a, the, the Thai friends I had in in Tennessee. Like, I didn't really know where Thailand was. That was like 25 years ago. And now I've lived here for 19 years. Yeah, Taiwan's like, that's China. Thailand's like completely different from Taiwan. Taiwan is like Chinese kind of more thing. Thailand's like completely different. Uh, there you go. Present LC, man. Get that shit up on Instagram. Be famous. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Quake, man. Ziplocs. Yeah. Ziplocs are made out of polyethylene or, or LDPE or whatever. Like, yeah. There was something wrong with that paper. Um, and the, the way they reported their conditions, like something was, was something not right like the ones that were like stored at a colder temperature, like degraded faster or something weird. There was something wrong with that paper. Um, and like I said, you can't, you can't go against like at my personal experience. I know that three year old cubes store, I store mine as whole mushrooms. I don't grind them up. Like, so when I harvest, I just dry them whole. I even leave some of the substrate. Um, so one of my jobs later, I need to clean the substrate off the bottom of them after they're dried i just find it easier just to rip them off because when i'm harvesting i, I kind of usually in like a hurry because i want to get the tent i want to get my i'll i want to get it done and so i just throw them on the dryer like clumps and then when they dry i find it also easier to separate them apart when they're dry just kind of and they'll like kind of crack apart um let's each his own man i used to prune prune or trim them all like it just depends how many you got like I sometimes have a lot of them, and so I don't want to sit there and like trim them as I'm harvesting them. Um, it just takes too long for me sometimes. Do 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 do
Um, the Hendrix, no, I don't think a lot of people are going to build their house. Um, I, uh, you can really like convert a typical, I, my bedroom, I, um, is a pretty good grow room and my living room is a pretty good lab. Um, if you want to convert an older house, just get a tent. Like a lot of people now are putting their labs inside of the, uh, a grow tent, you know, so just put the whole lab in an eight by eight tent and then yeah, job done. Um, that's moxie green. Um, yeah, oxygen burners. I think you mean they're, they're iron oxide packets. Yes, I have some of them right here. You can buy these. You can buy these things right here. They're oxygen. They're called oxygen scavengers or oxygen. So this one is called Osorb. They're just oxygen scavengers. Um, they're little packs. They're like silica gel. Um, I was reading the other day, though, um, what the problem is, is they those require a slight bit of humidity to actually absorb the oxygen. So what happens, it's got iron filings in it, like raw iron, the elemental iron, and iron reacts with oxygen. The only problem is to get that iron and the oxygen to react, you need a small amount of moisture. So there is a little bit of problem there if you have 100% dry mushrooms and then you put one of those oxygen absorbers in there and there's no there's no humidity like it won't really work so this is a minor problem is like this thing can't absorb the oxygen if there's no water in the air there's no humidity but again if you're vacuum sealing them that you're eliminating there's very 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 little like look at this package this package this is a normal vacuum seal bag right Oxygen is not getting in there. Now, if you're using a, a sandwich bag or a Ziploc bag, yeah, that's a problem. But most people would realize that you shouldn't use a, you know, polyethylene sandwich bag or Ziploc to store your mushrooms. Unless they're going to be, like, immediately sold or something, you know. You would never store your mushrooms in a Ziploc bag for a lengthy period of time. Um, so, yeah. Again, I don't know where that argon thing, I think somebody's trying to sell you argon. I just made it. Yeah. So yeah, those are oxygen absorbers, ice machine. I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean. Oxygen, small oxygen burners. The the like the hand warming things people used to use those. Those are again, they're just iron powder, and you. Uh, yeah, they just they just basically absorb oxygen and they give off heat. Um, I'm not sure if I'd go as far as calling oxygen burners. But, uh. Yeah, I mean, that, when I read that paper, there was something not right immediately. I had I went through it multiple times, and I'm like something is missing. There's something not right here, because it's not person. I think it was like yeah, two or three, four, like two or four months. It was like fifty percent of it had degraded, and I was like, that doesn't happen. Like no way, it's not. I don't know what they were doing. I, it's like if they were trying to get it to degrade or something. But I'll be honest, I've heard some very, very prominent my, mycologists say the way they like dry their mushrooms is to like put them on the like windshield of their car or they like wrap, put them in a paper bag and like put them in the refrigerator. And I'm like, wow, that's how you dry your specimens. That's not really good. No. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I said nitrogen cheaper, readily available. Um, I don't know why you need to use argon. Argon's expensive. And, uh, yeah. Probably not very environmentally friendly if you consider the amount of energy required. Liquid nitrogen is almost like a like a byproduct of other. It's like really, really, really cheap liquid nitrogen. Do, do, do. Shake your head for that. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. It's any events who you talk to. Yeah, Taiwan and China are more close than Thailand. Thailand ain't nothing like China. Which I've been to China many, many times. So yeah. There's some political shit going on there. I don't even follow. I don't really care. 
Thailand is way better than probably either China or Taiwan. Do, 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 do. CP uh, how would you make 20 gallons of liquid hold to the necklace and tie your force you can spare? How would you stir it and keep it from uh, look to the beer industry? If you wanted to make 20 gallons of LC, get the equipment they use to um, make beer, homebrew beer. So they sell and also they call it degassing wine. If you have if you have a large thing, they'll they will sell a paddle that you will mix uh you hook to a hand drill and you can use so look if you want to make 20 gallons of lc look to the beer brewing the home brewing industry they will have the equipment i really i think you're probably joking uh but um 20 gallons of lc it's gonna probably get contaminated somehow and it would be a waste of energy um and if you're thinking about like you know i don't know what you're planning on but it probably it's not gonna work <laughs> Yeah, feed corn napkin in the bottom. It'll work fine. Just make sure you pressure cook it long enough and you hydrate it properly. I don't know who Mark Weems is. Uh, how long do we do, do we keep a shoot box after harvest? Um, we were talking about this earlier. I normally do two flushes, and that's all. After that, it goes in the garbage. Mm, yeah, I always use CV, so uh, King Metroplex. The problem with me growing indoors is I'm terrified of insects. So I tend to get rid of my my shoe boxes. Like once I got my second flush, if I don't want spores, I'm done with them. Like see, so remember, I'm usually going for spores. I have way, way, way more much than I could ever personally consume. And I don't have that many friends. And so I'm not really, like I have excess already. So I'm not going after yields. Like I don't, I hate to admit it, but there's days where I will literally like throw perfectly good mushrooms in the garbage. I know that's like blasphemy, but if I've got swabs and I've got like 50 swabs, I don't sell that many swabs. So if I've got like, you know, like I got like a PE6, nobody's gonna buy PE6 swabs. So I make like 20 swabs, I harvest the fruit. After the first flush, I throw it in the garbage. Like I'm basically, trying to get another round of fresh spores. And after I get those spores, the prints, I've got six prints, 20 swabs of something like a PE6 or a B plus, which nobody's going to buy anymore. That tub goes in the garbage. I got other things to move on to. And I don't, I'm not push. I'm not trying to chase yields. It doesn't matter because I've got enough dried fruit for me and my friends for the next 30 years, probably. So, <laughs> not a problem. Not something I'm trying to squeeze that extra, like, fifth flush out of a shoebox. It's not, not what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, there you go, man. Drew, word. $55 food dehydrator, man. Just get them. They're like, you can use it for bananas and beef jerky and apples and stuff, too. <laughs> Tessie, I'm going to be long term. Should we ship any? Um, I ship spores, Jesse. No way in fucking hell I'm going to ship any dried fruit. Uh, but <laughs> for ship spores, yeah. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Uh, TX Cornbread spore swaps. Actually, I probably I got it. There you go. Mm -hmm. I already had it copied and pasted. Do, 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 do. I should probably be pushing that more. I don't get that many orders, but I don't ever really talk about it. I don't try to advertise. I just I'm do this for fun, you guys. I'm not really like... I lead a very, very like frugal life. Like I don't... Uh, I'm like not... I just, I just don't care about money. 
it's not it's weird i know everybody else in the world like fucking loves money i just don't really give a shit about it meanwhile he's good to buy stuff but all i'm gonna do is buy more fucking mycology stuff <laughs> like the fucking ring light the next the, i was looking oh, i'm gonna get a whiteboard oh shit i forgot to say that you guys i was looking for a whiteboard and i was gonna put it right here my bed's right there i was gonna put it right here so i could like draw on it and maybe might work because you guys will be able to see behind me so i was gonna like get like a like a little pointer thing i i actually looked but the whiteboards i saw were like 30 bucks and i was like eh, i don't know if i want it so i was thinking i'll just get some paper one of those like you know things they use in like office meetings I'm like ah, today's quarterly projections for the you know fifth quarter or whatever like one of those but um i'm not sure how that'll work to be honest if i'm turning around uh yeah i just oh yeah you're right andy i should probably do that i gotta figure out how to use all this shit. i'm just surprised i'm able to go live <laughs> once i figure stuff out then i'm like oh that's good enough I usually don't mess with that uh whether to tap it to win Fruit. Oh, yeah, fruit leather in your dehydrator. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Andy. I'll put the next time I go live or whatever, I'll put the I'll put a link right in the description. I need to figure out how to do that. What time is it, you guys? Is it? Oh, yeah. Um, I think I'll cut it at three hours, you guys. So if you got any questions in there. There's 57 people. It's oh gosh, yeah, it's like 1:30 here. Um, so there's another more practical thing. Is I gotta pee. <laughs> like I gotta, I have to pee really badly. So that that was a more practical. I know we're joking. I was on the Michael Kiki thing with him for like that was like five hours the other day. Oh. So yeah, um, I hate to even bring it up, you guys, but I saw something about um, Magic Butter Machine, you guys. Please, please, please do not buy a machine that uses oil to extract. I don't even want to say his name, but you guys can figure it out. There's a guy out there who's just, he makes it very clear. He's about his paper. He's just here to get paper, right? And he's turning our little our fucking very heartfelt and precious hobby he's turning it into a fucking joke speaking of money okay so yeah let me go off on my little rant you guys anybody who's doing that needs to get the fuck out of our hobby i'm sorry if your sole purpose in this hobby is to make some fucking paper get the fuck out okay i'm sorry we don't need this shit Okay, we got enough fucking problem with people selling bad spores and selling their whatever, man. We don't need some guy just preying on innocent people who may not be familiar with polar and non-polar chemical molecules. And so if you see something, there's a magic butter machine. He's selling these damn can of butter machines, the, the machines that basically melt butter or heat up oil and you put your cannabis in it and it extracts cannabinoids, THC, CBD, whatever. That's fine. Those molecules are, are oil soluble. They go into butter, they go into lipids, oils, fats. Our alkaloids in our mushrooms are not soluble in fatty material like that, right? Cannabinoids are, are soluble in fats and oils and butter, MCT, medium chain triglycerides. This fucking shit about trying to sell these can of butter machines to make your your happy butter. It's it's fucking ridiculous. And I cannot believe I actually posted a pretty straightforward uh, like explanation of why this is not it's not going to work. It doesn't work. And you're fucking selling to people like I was quite nice about it. And it just immediately got taken down. It was up for about like three minutes and then whoop, disappeared. So I waited about 10 minutes. I posted again, boop, gone. So this is just an outright lie. This is a lie, you guys. And I cannot believe that like all of you should like, I'm not even gonna like, 
the problem is you can boycott that channel. You can stop listening to whatever it doesn't. He's made it very clear that he's, he's here to prey on us. He's here to pray and just make money. It's, he's all about his paper. He didn't do anything for free. I don't, I don't, do, I don't do anything for free, right? Uh, it's all about my paper. I'm stacking paper, right? This is the shit we don't need, you guys. We don't need. And I, I don't even like, I, I'm like holding back. This like in, uh, makes me like so angry that there's still people out there and that these people are going to be allowed to continue this kind of mockery almost of our hobby. And this just like blatant disregard for anything scientific, right? This is like, it's just, this is 11th grade chemistry. And I know a lot of people maybe forgot their chemistry or whatever, but I know chemistry, <laughs> like polar, nonpolar, like our alkaloids are soluble in polar compounds or molecules, like water, hot water, perfect solvent for psilocybin and all the other alkaloids, not medium chain triglycerides or coconut oil or butter. This, this is a basic, basic misunderstanding of chemistry. And it's like, I don't even know. I feel like going and like screaming from the top of the roof, like, please, please, please do not buy these machines. And I just can't believe it. I think this should be, in fact, if I was, yeah, I, I lost stop now. But if I was in any way remotely associated with that person, I would have some words with him. And I, I know it's already like that video needs to be taken down like immediately. So anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's I don't I can't even believe the amount of hours I've wasted listening to that person. It's like a mockery. It's like a blatant mockery of like, look how smart I am. I'm gonna take advantage of all these newbies, and it's essentially calling us stupid. And it really bothers me a lot. Right. Uh, you notice more people are selling and shipping my seal. Yeah, liquid. Call. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, Brandon. There's the rules on all that stuff now. Um, we constantly in the vendors that are on like spore swap there's a bunch of vendors that that site is not mine there's about probably like 30 people that sell stuff on there and they're all they sell everything from lc to spores so i, I only sell swa uh, swabs and prints a couple some prints that i have like you know old like pe sticks and stuff like that uh but yeah like um there's people that sell lc research syringes what do they call them i think some people maybe still sell multi-sport syringes not too many but yeah plates everything i gotta i can't really ship plates from thailand to america that would be like a little bit too suspicious um spores are fine and, and swabs swabs i put them in a you know greeting card so they're like it just looks like a greeting card um and i like chop them off so they're only like this long it goes through fine. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the nobody really cares now. Some people are selling liquid culture plates, colonized plates. Um, the problem is then, and, and like I don't know the people selling these plates. They're um, I don't know, man. You got to trust that person. Like what plate? I bought like liquid culture before that was not not the correct thing. <laughs> There's a lot of the same thing. There's trust issues. You guys guarantee me a shit from me. It's going to be the right thing. Uh, but like what you're getting from so like some guy on Reddit or whatever, or like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to say his name, but you guys figured it out. Um, yeah, like I'm in a different country, so I don't think he can come kick my ass. Which I've heard him like threaten other multiple people like multiple times. It's like, wow, you yeah, like <laughs> on a live feed talking about kicking people's asses. Like, again, I'm not sure if the mycology world needs somebody like that. Um, <laughs> you made a great um, for me to come back. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Drew. <laughs> <coughs> yeah coconut oil for cannabis is a win definitely but not so mct medium chain triglycerides triglyceride is a fancy name for um 
than oil. So glycerol is the background, so the glyceride. So you basically take three fatty acid chains and you hook them to this glycerol backbone. Those are, that's where the triglyceride comes from. Um, they're what we call fats and oils, and they're um, very, very like nonpolar molecules. Like, so light dissolves like, you know, like that's kind of the idea. So coconut oil is very nonpolar, so it dissolves other things like large hydrocarbon molecules like CBD and THC, they're big, big molecules with lots of long aliphatic carbon chains. They dissolve well in, in fats and oils. Psilocybin is a small molecule with lots of little charges on it. There's charges on the nitrate, charges up there near the phosphate, there's charges on all these different things, uh, the nitrogens and whatnot, the amine groups, and they're, they're, they dissolve well in polar solvents like water, um, not in non-polar solvents like coconut oil. So it's like oil and water don't mix, right? So like, you know, like, right, like the normal adage, oil and water don't mix. So like, you know, like water is, is, is polar, is a more, and oil is non-polar. That's the more technical thing. Yeah, this idea is like that people, you guys, we got to get used to this too in the next two or three years, especially in America. You guys are going to see all the whole range of people trying to take advantage of people that need medicine. Like, so if you really are using, you know, our fungi for medicine and and you have the audacity to come in and just simply say, hey, here's a new market. Let me take advantage of these sick people, these sick people that need help from the minute medicine. And you're trying to take advantage of them because they have psychological issues. Maybe they don't have the time to research this shit. Maybe they're in some adverse life situation and you're fucking have the audacity to come and be like, let me take advantage of those fucking people. Like you need to fuck off, right? Go back to cannabis or go back to your fucking cannabis world. Take advantage of stone fucking potheads, right? Like, I mean, you know, like don't come fuck with our world. It pisses me off just because it's a fucking new market. That is like so like that is at, like I think pretty much as low as you can go. Like, let me take advantage of these sick people that need medicine. Like, what, what are you going to go rob, like, a homeless person on the street next? Like, oh, that guy's got some nice shoes. Let me go rob him. He, oh, wait, he's homeless, but I don't care. I like his shoes. Drew, I think are you are I'm assuming you're talking about the, the guy. I don't even want to say his name. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jedi again. This, this whole, yeah, I don't need. I, don't, I yeah, I'll just stop talking about him because I get fucking excited again. Do 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 do. Yeah, he's key instead. <laughs> That's true. Use, use ghee instead of butter. Uh, how do you harvest Enigma? I harvested Enigma the other day. Unfortunately, I let it go probably about a week too long, and it got really soft on the bottom. Um, I just, I just, I literally just put my hand fingers down and went and like raked it off. Uh, I've only, I've only harvested CKB like twice in Enigma once, so I'm not really sure there might be a better way. But I just literally like took, like I was raking leaves or something. I just kind of like raked it up. Um, so I don't know. That might be better. Yeah. So Drew, there's a good example. Thank you. That's another good, like butane is nonpolar. The reason why we like butane hash oil, uh, right. BHO. It's the reason why you use butane is because it's nonpolar. Butane is a four carbon molecule and it's nonpolar. So it dissolves other nonpolar things like THC. Now, if you try to use butane to dissolve, uh, like psilocybin, it does, it's not going to work. Because butane is nonpolar. So again, it's like dissolves like. So butane being nonpolar, it dissolves other nonpolar stuff like cannabinoids. But psilocybin is not, is not a cannabinoid. It's a completely different type of compound, right? And as we all know, 
psilocybin degrade uh, uh, dissolves well in water, which is a polar molecule. So it's basic chemistry. It's, it's amazing that anybody let him get away with that for like the last two days. I can't believe it. It's like this is this is like high school chemistry. Uh, yeah, they might much do that. Do that shit. <laughs> Yeah, giveaways. I was gonna do some giveaways, but I, you know, why I stopped? I wasn't. I stopped because I guess of him. I was like, oh, that'd be cool to give giveaways, and then I was like, no, no, you know what? Oh, you'd have to join my Discord. The only way you're gonna get <laughs> motherfuckers when are you gonna start putting in numbers? Do it, do it, just for fun, so like. <laughs> yeah, DKC greasy molecule for greasy brain. <laughs> No one type of alcohol drop. Wait, yeah, coconut oil is good. I uh, coconut oil is, is the bomb, man. Ah, uh, no sport. Yeah, stick fish. I'm uh, I'm gonna try to keep it real here, man. I ain't never gonna be fucking. Oh yeah, the, the name name yeah the people these that's the other thing three thousand dollars the ketamine sessions now are what like two or three thousand for like an hour long session, Jesus Christ, you know, uh, I'll just uh, uh enigmas is, is just a blob I, I don't know. <laughs> I could go into the chemistry more. That's why I want to get one of the whiteboards, the the little easel with the whiteboard. Um, yeah, Quake, uh, toxic solvents, that, that doesn't really have anything to do with it because you get rid of the solvent. Most of the things you, like a lot of the uh, things that you probably eat or, or medicines that you, they use like toxic solvents, a lot of them are toxic, um, but they're not in the final product, hopefully. Like you don't, they don't want the, you know, they use like these things called rotary baps and stuff to recover the solvent because usually the solvents are quite expensive. And they don't, they're not going to be in the final product. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, DKC, I think you're more on the chemistry side, right? You know, the chemistry, that's the problem. A lot of people don't understand the chemistry. Well, but if you're, uh, if you're a little bit familiar with chemistry, like <clears throat> the difference between polar and nonpolar things should be pretty, pretty obvious like straight away. That when I started watching that video, I was like, wait a minute, what he what is he where's he going with this? I thought maybe he was gonna mix water with the butter, you know, like a polar, nonpolar solvent somehow and like do a separation, like the phases we're gonna separate or something. You know, he's gonna use like a separatory funnel. I was way, way overestimating his business ability, you know. I thought maybe he was gonna get like a butter phase or an oil phase and like a water phase and then separate the like you know non-polar like contaminants from the polar no 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 i was uh i was pushing i was going way too far right hi moscow <laughs> i want to go to moscow someday i'm like much closer now than i was but uh i don't know i haven't traveled in so long do 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 quick oh joke yeah 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 sorry i don't oh now i gotta go find you yeah, if you ever you guys ever want to learn <clears throat> about chemistry of uh you guys know Alexander Shulkin and Tycho. If you want to get really interested in organic chemistry, man, look up these two books. Um I'm sure some of you know them already. I kind of hesitate to type them in the chat, but you if you're interested in like how to do organic chemistry and whatever. Those two are online and they are, um, yeah, they're good books. That's how I got into organic chemistry. They basically tell you, so tryptamines, I have no, oops, I spelled it wrong. T T I H K A L. I fucked that up the last three. So it's, <laughs> let me try that again. T I have known and loved. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, they're, uh, Oh yeah, Nile Red and Tor. I don't know about Total Synthesis, but there's another one I saw too. Um, might be Total Synthesis. I don't remember the. Is uh, I don't really remember 
what's the name of the channel if I saw? I saw a really good one. Um, have you met anything worth me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tickle is, or tickle, or however people say it. Um, it's pretty much got every analog that is based on the indole or the serotonin or phenethylamine or whatever you want to, um, not phenethylamine, um, serotonin, the, the tryptamine, tri that's where the T, tryptamine I have known and love. So the other one, pycle, is the phenethylamine stuff. So all the, the, the like sort of mescaline, if you know what mescaline looks like, amphetamines, all that shit, um, MDMA. So yeah, I don't want to get too much into chemistry unless somebody like, wants me to, but uh somebody like dkc they don't kill carrots he's probably way more i think he's well more well versed than i am uh nico i wouldn't bother buying your own, uh building your own flow hood i did before but it was like 30 years ago the actual filter cost almost as much as just like the bot brand new flow hood it wasn't really worth it yeah alan the shelgan index the big blue one yeah i don't i don't know they only got the the phenethyl means in it now though, right? The one we got, uh, it's only got mostly the phenethyl mean stuff. It doesn't have the tryptamine stuff. I think they were gonna make a second volume two to the Shelgan index, but it's all online. I don't think the Shelgan index is online, but I know Pike Pickle and Tickle, uh, they're online. They're on like Arrow with it, one of those. Yeah, I can just type it in and Google will pop up. I think there's actually a link from the Wikipedia page to. They have like a new sort of interactive one. I saw it last time I checked. Um, what do you think about DNA fusion? You think about smart fusion, DNA modified? Oh, yeast. I'm assuming you mean yeast, right? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeast and E. coli. I think they're already making it. Um, it doesn't really matter because psilocybin is a pretty, pretty easy to make organic molecule. I mean, compared to a lot of the the more the pharmaceutical drugs like you could make up a lot of psilocybin like pretty cheaply just by a standard like chemical means but if you got a hold of a, of an e coli or a yeast that could make psilocybin um yeah i guess that would be cool i'm not sure really why they would really maybe it's cheaper that way but you could make it just by normal like psilocybin's not it's not a very it's basically like you know, it's like a three or four step reaction. It's not like a, it's not like difficult to make synthetic psilocybin. Um, I would guess in, I'm guessing maybe if they did it in a yeast, they could like say it was some kind of process was patentable. Maybe it would be a way to get, cause you can't just say because all the, uh, all the synthetic routes for psilocybin are already well published, so they couldn't put a patent on the synthesis. But maybe if they put it into a yeast or a bacterium, they could say that like that was patentable. Um, oh, is it okay? Jedi T cow, P cow, P, P cow, T cow, like tea, like drinking tea, or is it T cow? Again, I've heard of T cow, T cow, tickle, tickle heard them like a bunch of different ways i want to dkc okay i want to bring up psilocybe mescalorians oh is that the, a new the supposedly new species um i saw the name once i don't really know i don't need to know what it looks like to be honest i don't know what section it is or it's in a species complex it looks like a cube or i don't know i've just seen the name yeah, chemistry 101. I, I actually, uh, I have taught chemistry for like quite a few years, but um, it's all like the basic stuff, you know, like basic and organic. Um, people really, really don't like chemistry. It's kind of funny when you teach chemistry and then if you tell somebody, yeah, like, oh, yeah, what, they're like, what do you teach? You're like, oh, I teach chemistry. The first thing they'll say is, oh, I hate chemistry. Like first thing, they'll be like, I hate, it'd be like if you told somebody like, oh, I'm a special education or I, I teach, you know, like, you know, special needs kids. They'd be like, I hate special needs kids. <laughs> you know, something like that. It's like, it's like, why do you have to tell me how much you hate chemistry? I just teach it, man. Uh, 
I, I don't know, TKC, you're going to have to lead the discussion there because I don't know um, I don't know anything about Mescalero. Just... <laughs> yeah, my 10th grade chemistry teacher, he was the one that pretty much like sent me down this tangent of like, wow, like, you know, you can like blow stuff up and like make drugs with chemistry. So... Yeah, he was he probably changed my life. He lived just up the road from me. The there's a lichen that has up to eight percent. I I remember seeing that, and I don't remember what the lichen was. And I remember looking it up on a Google search, and I found like a single reference to it. Um, I I also heard people were saying that. Like they were finding psilocybin in cordyceps. And shit. This is bullshit, you guys. That's like a dirty machine. Or one of the samples got contaminated. I, I think one of those guys who sells cordyceps was talking about that they'd find the beta carbolines, the like harmine and harmine, you know, the ones that are the MAOI inhibitors or the MAO inhibitors, the MAOIs. They're like, oh, they found them in cubes in the other. I don't, I don't. That's again, they're trying to make new stories. It's, uh... Yeah, Andy, the whole entourage effect in mushrooms is something that, that needs to be elucidated. The problem is we don't have good HPLC testing, even for like the raw alkaloid levels, right? Like we can't even get consistent tests on like the total alkaloid levels, like, you know, the, just even the psilocybin and psilocin, like the total... You know, they usually, I think they put them together, PCB, PCN, or something like that. I forgot. Um, like, we can't even get good, consistent results to figure out what that those numbers are. So if you get out to, like, baocystin and norbaocystin and aruginacin, and then you're trying to quantify them, I don't see, like, that happening very soon. And then there's the whole, like, problem, like, People are probably going to lie about that, too, just like they lie about the THC and the CBD levels, you know? Hmm. Yeah, Mycopsycho NSS is Natal Super Strain or Natal Super Strength. Peanut is supposedly the species, uh, which I went into earlier about how it's just a cube that is a cultivar or cultigen or a, whatever, a type of a cubensis um here's the, here's where the problem roots from the, the nss was the one that its sequence which is internally transcribed spacer that's the sequence that's up on gen bank that supposedly represents this difference between cubensis and natalensis so we don't even know if nss is the real natalensis that was uh, published as a species by <clears throat> by johan guards we don't know if that its sequence is from where it's exactly from it apparently came from some private cultivator in northern california he was actually called norcal something norcal Myco. so there, there's just so many problems i don't even want to get into it uh there's no like for more practical purposes if you grow something that's a gnat it's going to be long it's going to be skinnier and smaller but it's just a cube people say oh it has anti-inflammatory bullshit i've never seen a reference to that except for hearsay and from the people who are trying to sell it. Um, I've got several Natalensis as well as the NS set. If you want Nats, I got, I, they're on my little spore shop, spore swap site there. Um, I made several hybrid, uh, hybrids, even now I'm calling them hybrids. I made crosses of Natalensis with about seven or eight different things. I got them written up on my wall. I had, I crossed it with uh, Melmac TP, a thick penis, I, uh, MVP, cross it with a tat, uh, I crossed it with an albino watla. I crossed it with about like two, 10 different things. And I've also crossed the uh, ODPE. So it fully crosses like 100% with, with all of the other cubes, which makes it the same biological species. And then that's where I probably should stop because I don't want to get off on another tangent. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, so the yeah, other Danish are already doing that with yeast. Just, uh, 
<laughs> Make more thirty thousand for a baseline, yeah. Do 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 do. Um, King Metroplex. I don't know what you mean, parasexual. You mean asexual or what? I don't know what you mean, parasexual. I've never really heard that term used in filamentous fungi. Sexual or asexual, but I don't know what you mean by parasexual. Yeah, of course, it's a bunch of different things. Oh, you're talking about, yeah, there's the, that, like all this stuff about the, um, the enantiomers or the stereoisomers that you're going to make and how you're going to get it in your body. And there's a bunch of different stuff. You show some of the bacteria at the base of them. Yeah, bacteria, Greg, if you get bacteria, like sometimes you get pseudomonas or you get, um, I don't know about orange spots, but. If you get bacteria, usually you just cut them off. Just treat it like it would be like food, right? If you had like a piece of cauliflower and it was kind of black or brown, you just cut it off, right? Um, the only time I'd be worried is if you were like, if the, if it was really like all over the whole fruit. Like just try to cut out any, any contaminated spot. I mean, I suppose there's a small chance the toxins could get into the rest of the fruit body, but if you pretty you know, pretty uh, generously, like, prune out the spots that look bad. Oh, you sh it should be okay. But, uh, yeah, I've got a theory that a lot of the people, they say they have trouble with the digestive issues when they eat mushrooms. It might be that they're eating bacterial mushrooms that have been, like, maybe not harvested, or maybe they were contaminated, or maybe even they were... Um, like not dried properly or stored properly and that that might be part of the problem people have digestive issues it's also the chitin uh right because your body's like we're not designed to like digest chitin um so it could be that but it could also be that maybe like that there's like bacteria on the mushrooms you know it's like rotten food like i've seen some of the the samples here in thailand that people like have you know got from their friends and I'm like, wow, I can't believe somebody sold these. These are like rotten. Like I've seen bags that are like still moist inside. Like they're not fully dried. You know, if you ever get stuff and it like doesn't crack, like, like shatter when you press on it, like something's wrong. Like don't use Ziploc baggies. Uh, uh, Big D, that my oh gosh, the whole mycorrhizal thing, and the, the, some people have talked about using like um, bacillus subtilis and certain types of lactobacilli. It's a big, big area, and uh, there's a couple products out there that I wouldn't really, really suggest. But if you want to, there's a bunch of products out there that you can add powders and whatnot to your to your substrate. Mycorrhizae, our, our, our cubes aren't um, mycorrhizal. So if you're thinking like along the lines of like trichoderma, you definitely don't want to add trichoderma to our cube grow. But a lot of the, the uh, weed growers, you know, they'll put like all that shit in their soil. But remember, our our substrate isn't really soil. It's it's just like a moisture reservoir. So like a plant is going to grow for months and months. Uh, like So mycorrhizal in our situation is, is not like our cubes are the mycorrhizal, <laughs> you know, the, like that's the myco we want. We don't want any other stuff in there competing with our cubes. Um, and the fact that like, again, quar is pretty much just the moisture for moisture reservoir. You don't, you don't really need to add anything to it. Some people say um, that it like uh, basically, you know, will, will help decrease the contamination, but you shouldn't have contamination. If your solution to contamination is to add something else, that's not the way you should approach it. You should approach it by eliminating the contamination at the beginning, right? Don't add something to fix the contamination that is already there. Like it shouldn't be there to begin with. Yeah, I think you. Um, the bacteria affect the potency. Yeah, probably degrade it. Um, bacteria are generally, they have enzymes, they'll degrade the fruit, they'll degrade 
they'll cause oxidation, they'll degrade all kinds of, you know, uh, precursors to those metabolites. Like if you've got bacteria, it's going to be going after tryptophan, which is a tryptophan amino acid. That's like the precursor to psilocybin, right? So you don't want bacteria like trying to eat up your tryptophan, your indole alkaloids, you know, your indole base there. Like you don't want to, you don't want that like competition. Um, yeah, bacteria generally bad. There's always lab energy to finalize the results on using the uh, Jedi, I'm not really sure what you're talking about there. <laughs> I'm actually talking about those reports. So COA certificate of authenticity or something. Uh, why is it not able to investigate Liberty Caps? Because for one, probably they're too small of a yield. Nobody really cares. <clears throat> And the other thing is, I think they're quite abundant where they grow. Like, I don't know if anybody really, like, is that interested in it, um, to be honest. I've never tried. I've never heard of anybody trying. I think because they grow wild and the people that eat them have ready access to them. And they probably just aren't that interested. You know, the people that started, they learn how to grow cubes or people that grow, you know, that like, live in, like, Minnesota or, like, Michigan Ohio, where there's no wild, there's no wild psychoactive species, right? So you're going to pick the one like Cubensis that gives you the best yield, pretty high alkaloid content. Liberty caps, too tiny. And then there's some weird, you know, like, you know, mutualistic. You know, the Liberty caps, there's some symbiotic mutualism thing going on there that like, the, the cubes are cubes are just easier to grow. So I don't know. Maybe if you could, if you wanted to grow them, I'm sure you could. But it just might not be worth it. Do, 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 do. Let's see. The cake of the soy is so hungry for the mushroom piece they have. If not, it's not good. Hmm. Not sure what you're referring to, Andy. Uh, you guys are further up in there. I kind of forgot what we were talking about already. <laughs> hey, Peaky, make Peaky. Oh, I'm gonna call you Peaky Miko now. I need to change your name. Put it, change that Y to an A. <laughs> Peaky Miko. <laughs> Uh, oh man, I gotta really pee, you guys. We've been three, two, you know, one. <clears throat> okay, you guys, how about we do this since uh, uh, since we're all here, since everybody's here, let's take a 10 minute break. I really, really like need to pee, and I might go like grab a cigarette real quick. Um, so you guys, here, okay, the um, I'm gonna try to peg it here somewhere. Um, you, Alan, where can I buy? My spores are at the spore swaps. You can look up further in. Okay, let me, because I really need to pee, you guys. But I, I, I really want to talk. Actually, now we're getting into some kind of cool topics here. Okay, Piki Miko, I'm going to start with you when we come back. I'm going to go smoke and I'll uh, say 10 minutes, you guys. I'll even look. So sorry I don't have any, like, elevator music to play, but I'll be back in 10 minutes, y'all. Okay, so sorry now. <laughs>
Oh, that's cool that you guys got a. All right, that was nice. I said 10 minutes. Okay, and that's cool. You got uh, some people on the Liberty Caps thing. I've never actually, I don't even know if I've ever seen Liberty Caps before. I'm not, I mean, like in, in the wild, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever been anywhere in the world where they grow. They grow in Europe and the Pacific Northwest. Somebody told me it's Norwegian guy. He said he, they grow like out in his backyard. <laughs> Would be really cool. Also, be Rowland. Um, just go to here. Let me just. I guess I might as well. I, I feel like I'm plugging my sport thing, but I'm not putting it in just in case. Mm -hmm. Via the lichen thing, I can't remember what. Lichen, it was probably if you do a Google search, it was some really obscure lichen, and I think it it's like a really like it's like a tiny little lichen. It's one of those like crustose things that grows on rocks or something. If I can, but I don't really remember. If somebody can find a a link, that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, the SLPs and the things for I've had some cannabis people who were clearly in the in the in the mushroom realm to make some money asking me about my SLPs and stuff. I'm like, good luck, I ain't giving you shit. You can you can go go through all the same channels as everybody else. You try to make some hybrid between yeah, paniolises and the and the uh, I I've thought about maybe I don't, I don't know if anybody's ever the problem with making a a, a true hybrid between a paniolis and a psilocybe is i don't know if they have the same number of chromosomes and i also don't know how you'd have to do some kind of like a protoplast fusion type of thing which i'm not uh i'm not gonna get into that's other people's forte oh yeah i was gonna i was gonna do that Chucker style pee jug, but <laughs> this jug, yeah. I think I told the story the other day on the Geeky Podcast, the Michael Geeky Podcast, about being on a rugby trip and we had filled up this like huge plastic bear that had cookies in it and we'd filled it with piss. And as we were going down the highway to like 65 miles an hour, somebody decided they were going to empty it out the front window. And it like came back in and splashed like it was one of those big long like passenger vans, and it like went back in you know the whole like what is that the Bernoulli thing low pressure high pressure thing like it basically sucked in all the piss into the van because it was like lower pressure or like what, how's it go yeah so not lower pressure and it got like sucked into the van. Uh, that's horrible. It had a bunch of like tobacco chaws bit in it too. Uh, the... <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised nobody, I'm sure somebody else is talking smack about me on some other Discord somewhere. Don't worry. There's plenty of people that don't like me out there. Do do do. Rolling a doobie, going to the gym. Wow. <laughs> uh, no, no, I pooped. I pooped earlier. <laughs> How long should I PC a pint jar of grain at fifteen 
Yeah, what, uh, one. If you've only got one pint jar, if you're doing 15 psi, probably an hour might work. I'd probably go for an hour and a half. But if it's just one pint jar of grain, like you could probably do it for an hour, it should be okay. I would probably go an hour and a half. But if it's just a single pint jar of grain, if it's just like rye or a uh, wild bird seed or WBS, you know, it's. I don't know, maybe an hour would be enough. I would try, like, try to go an hour and a half. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, now they all ship everywhere, literally like everywhere in the world. Yeah, Denmark, probably in yeah, Norway, Denmark. I, I wish I, I don't even know, to be honest, if I saw them, if I would even really, really, really be 100% sure what they were. Yeah, uh, South F. We talked about that. There's there's so many problems with that Natalensis thing. There is a fella in uh, South Africa who was gonna send us an actual an actual thing, but it was like he was gonna get a mushroom that grew in Natal and Cubensis grew in Natal, but Natal region of South Africa. It's some kind of <clears throat> one of the like provinces or something in South Africa. And, the problem is Cuban. We don't know what the original, I don't want to go into the details, but, but you have to have the original specimen that the thing was named after. And that specimen is nowhere to be found. So that's an issue that is probably never going to be overcome. So the oldest mushroom found in the world, I don't know. They said they found some kind of fossilized. They thought it was some sort of prototexoides or something like that, but they think it's a mushroom now. Mm, oldest mushrooms. There's some like some of the old armillaria, the honey mushroom stands, or maybe some of the the parasitic mushrooms, probably like up in Canada somewhere where there's a lot of conifers or like large, like kind of monocultures of certain kinds of pine trees. Um, but uh, there's some of those uh, Phalinus and there's a uh, Fomato Fomatopsis, I think, or Fomies. But I don't know. It's hard to know. Like oldest, there's, there's there's a problem with that too, because you know, like if it's the same fungus, like but it's been asexually propagated, is that like still the same fungus? I don't, I don't know how you determine the oldest. Ooh, Donnie, you doing transfers, crosses? Yeah, I got a bunch of crosses. I'm gonna have like wait, I'm gonna have a bunch more of them coming up. Got my old tent, man. I'm loving the tent. Good night, Drew. Oh, you where are you on my side of the world too? It's, it's gonna be daytime for most of you guys. If the grains are for human consumption, then one hour, yeah, uh, like Andy says there, yeah, um, yeah, one hour probably for human stuff, but yeah, if you're doing like feed corn, maybe three hours, maybe not even then. I don't know. I didn't have good luck with feed corn, um, there's just a lot of garbage in there. Mm, I, the on the shelf, like the dry fruit. I can tell you had cheese dried fruit are good for years I, I i personally know three years and i i think even i would say 10 years um you have to have them in an airtight container and you have to keep them dry and keep them away from light so like ultraviolet light or any kind of light is going to degrade them Light usually makes like free radicals, especially UV light and free radicals and things like that. That when the silicin, when it when it makes those blue uh, chromophores, it's literally it's like a free radical kind of like an unpaired electron. And when you start doing that, things get very reactive, and then that, that leads to degradation. But airtight, vacuum sealed silica gel, completely hundred percent dry. They'll last for for years. Many, many years. Uh, <laughs> to do, do, do um, close. I can't feel my video. Of course, and they go. Yeah, the man vacuum sealed, airtight tank, airtight bags, silica pack in the bag. That's the way when they can catch. <clears throat> so, Brian, 
tree when taking tissue culture from the hood? Is there any benefit doing it to auger tight straight to green? Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, Brian. You can you can use like uh, tissue to grains. It's just not usually done because number one, you want to get a, a culture of it. Like if you're gonna go through the process of making a clone from tissue, you want to have a culture to like save, right? So I mean, I suppose you can go directly to grain. You I know for a lot of other fungi and, and oyster mushrooms and stuff, they'll do that. You know, you take oyster mushroom put them in grain i just don't think it's a great idea uh because again i would want the culture so that i could propagate it from the culture and not just i don't know that i don't like living on the it like if you're waiting if you've only got this linear thing of like oh fruit grain and then fruit grain and like you don't have a culture i i would like doing it that way um also, yeah, if it works, if it works, it works. I wouldn't suggest it as like a standard procedure. <laughs> I got a little crazy with the cross, but when you start, <clears throat> when you start getting a lot of monos, man, you can cross. You know, if you got say ten monos and you get an eleventh mono, that means you can cross that eleventh one with all the other ten. So you've got like 10 new crosses. So once you get to about 10 or 20, I don't know, I've probably got about 25 or 30 monos now. Once you get that, you can start crossing. And I think I told you guys the math, the formula for it. It's like N times N minus one divided by two. That's how many crosses you can do. So if you've got like 10 monos, 10 times nine divided by two is 45. So with 10 monos, you can do 45 unique crosses. <laughs> that's, that's a lot to keep you busy. Mm, yeah, tissue to grain sounds slow. To, yeah, that's another thing. It's just, it just doesn't seem like a great way to do it. I was in before the veil breaks. Uh, name Yana. Yeah. Um, mostly people want to do before the veil breaks. It's for bag appeal. And it's so they don't break apart in the bag. And it also, um, the spores don't spread. So if you have a spore dropper, as soon as that veil breaks, the, the spores are going to start to mature. And if you're inside a tent or something, they're going to like start to go everywhere. On the other fruit, they're going to go. Some people think that if they land on the substrate, they like inhibit the second flush. I've never really noticed much of a difference. But I soak and rinse my substrate after the first flush. Um, so I wouldn't probably notice it anyway, but it's mostly just an aesthetic thing, bag appeal. And also if you've got nice mushrooms and then like black crap all over the top of them from the spores sticking, it just looks ugly. It's just an aesthetic thing. So that's, that's the main reason why people want to pick before the, the veil breaks and that, that is also before the spores start to drop. Um, and some people will talk about the potency being different. I don't think <clears throat> uh, um, <clears throat> if you look at dry biomass, I don't think it really matters that much because once the mushroom's at the point where the veil is about to break, it's probably absorbed most of the water. Um, I mean, it could absorb some more water for the cat to sort of, you know, plane out and expand, but I don't think there's going to be that much of a difference in the potency. Some people would disagree, though. Again, you're, you're back to the problem. We don't have proper like HPLC testing, like consistent HPLC testing that shows cat versus stem, pre veil break, post veil break. You know, aborts versus fully grown fruit. We, we just don't really have those kind of numbers. But for for practical reasons, you should just pick them before the break, or like right as the veil breaks, or just before. And that's been the advice from, from cultivators for 30 or 40 years. It's almost like butt mushrooms. You know, nobody wants to buy a butt mushroom that has, if it's got a bunch of black spores coming down, well, it'd be brown and it'd be Eric's, but they just, this is this aesthetic thing. You know, people like the, here are the patty straw mushrooms that start off with the universal veil. If those, so they're like an egg, if you don't, if you sell those after that universal veil breaks, like nobody wants to buy them or you have to significantly reduce the price. So a lot of people 
they just like there's a little happy face it looks like a little happy face inside the mushroom which is really actually upside down it looks like a little happy face when you cut it in half so people like that if you let the universal veil break then it, it just looks kind of ugly they're not ugly but people prefer them when they're in the like sort of egg shape so do 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 <laughs> I'm over my mono problem. I don't have a problem. Now I've got a diamond problem. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make all my monos with the with the dicarion blobs. And I have three dicarion blobs, the the CKB, the Enigma, and the tattoo. And somebody sent me, they say as a tote blob. Um so we'll see. Uh that was um uh, I don't know if you, but uh, a pretty, pretty, very, very knowledgeable guy. Um, I don't know if he wants me to say his name, but um, he sent me a tote blob. So maybe that'll be a fourth blob to make with these 25 or 30 models that I have. So there's like a hundred crosses right there. And then I'm going to clone the fruit from them and I'm going to get spores from them to do the F2 and the F3s. And so once you start getting into this, uh, I mean, I guess I'm breeding i guess i hate to say like oh I'm a mushroom breeder it sounds so pretentious but i guess that's what i'm doing <laughs> yeah i was trying to show you the microscope yet yeah i got a little excited there for a while um still am excited <laughs> So, hey, I reread the paper we discussed earlier, and they indeed never mentioned the use of any bag or jar for storage. Yeah, that, that paper, something is whack. As, the, as a kid say, that's something, that shit's whack. There's something wrong with that paper. The numbers in there don't make sense. And I think it was something crazy, like after six months, like 50% of the, the alkaloids were gone. It like, doesn't make any sense. Um, it almost made it seem like you needed to like buy a freeze dryer or something. I think maybe that's what they were trying to do. <laughs> Sell freeze dryers. We're going to read up on isolating a cultivar. Um, I'm not sure, Drew, what exactly you mean, isolating a cultivar. Uh, cloning, I reckon, if you mean that. Or I don't know if you mean like making a new one. Uh, pheno hunting would be... Like, if you want to read up on some of the sort of, I guess, the sort of rationale on the idea is look up pheno hunting. And the pheno hunting cannabis is kind of analogous to what we do. It's not exactly the same, but the same basic idea. Um, you just, instead of germinating a bunch of seeds, you germinate a bunch of spores. And then you pick the phenotypes after they, after they fruit. And then you clone a phenotype, and then you can either keep growing that clone that gives you that phenotype or you can then get spores from that um, that mushroom that you like the way that one looks you get spores from that and then you can go to the you know the next gen the f2 f3 depends if you're trying to like stabilize something uh like what there's again where old like shroomery posts get a really like obnoxious where there's like the, it has to be f8 it has to be f9 which takes several years so again that might have been a a way for the, the people who were selling spores back then to keep boobies out of the, the breeding game. Like if you tell somebody, oh, wait, by the way, if you ever want to sell something, you better have it go out to F8 because that's the only way it's stabilized. Well, it's going to take you like a year at least to get to the F8 probably, even if you know what you're doing. So like, and you don't have any problems. So that was a way for them to keep the competition like discouraged from ever trying to to get something to the point where they would sell it and those guys are i don't know they're really old school there's a different mentality going on with that group of people uh high spore yielding fruit and dehydrated what called yeah there's there's an issue with spores and sinusitis there's also just the simple they're just dusty, allergic, you know. Um, 
Yeah. So if you got a problem with spores, like you definitely want to pick before the veils break. <laughs> yeah, we're all. I think Peaky, we're we're all controlled by the fungus now. It's a little. It's kind of funny. Here it is. What like two thirty in the morning? I'm good. I'm going to go check my tent, too, after this. So I was actually going to make some more substrate cakes, but I don't know. <laughs> my, uh, let's see. It depends how much how many people are here. I can talk all night, man. This is like, you know, back in high school. When I never did that, but, like, you know, people that would stay on the night on the phone all night talking to each other. Like, I guess that's what people do on the Internet now. <laughs> uh, Space Pirate, you're welcome. Well, I'm really, really happy that you guys, like, um, it, if anybody, like, learns anything from me, I'm, I'm quite, at, like, achieved my goal in life. At, at this point, my, like, my life is pretty much about teaching people how to grow mushrooms because I want, I don't want these companies to do what they've done to cannabis, and I don't want them to do what they've done to pharmaceuticals where it's become this this money thing and uh you know everybody should be able to grow their own mushrooms at home if that's what you want to do you should be able to do it and we're we're really at the the verge of like this whole thing like breaking wide open you know um, it'll probably take a while but you know once you have knowledge that's the thing you can lose money you can lose houses you can lose cars you know but knowledge is something they can't take away from you Right? Nobody can take away your knowledge once you know it. Unless, you know, you get Alzheimer's or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> that would be a different story. But nobody can take away knowledge from you. That's what. That's why knowledge is power, right? Did you used to be on the street? Yeah, somebody asked me this the other day. Uh, I, I w used to lurk on the shroomery, but I was never, like, registered or anything. Um, I don't have anything against them. It's just a lot of it... Uh, it's just like illegally old school, you know. Yeah, and people talking on the phone all night. I don't think I ever did that. Maybe, like, I'm sure I must have talked to some girl on the phone for way too long. <laughs> uh, but probably you know, a couple times. Time to chop up game in the kitchen. Hey, me, my wife. I became a new hobby. Yeah, Alan. Oh, you need a new hobby like mycology or you need a new, a different hobby like fishing or something? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty okay. You guys with the, I can talk for a long, long time about mushrooms. Three most common names for Iceland like is that cult? Oh, the, are those common names? Colima Fusco virus. Amotrima, uh, Miriam, and the Yancis, and like a few. Those are common names. Cool. Thank you, guys. One of these times, uh, I'll get out the old whiteboard and we'll, we'll I'll, if. Kind of go through the whole mono carrion thing i know that but it's hard for people that are just getting into it i know it's very exciting to like think about mono mono you know mono carrions and trying to like make things and stuff i know it's really really exciting everybody wants to make a new cultivar and they want to name it after their their dog or their cat or their kid or their partner or whatever but it's a little bit more complicated than most people are really ready for i think <laughs> Microtube to LC. Uh, I just got some microtubes. <clears throat> these things, the Eppendorfs. I just got some of these for the first time last week. And I don't know. I, I'm going to, I grew them out on agar. I don't think I'd be comfortable going from this to LC. Uh, you have, you're going to have to put a lot of faith in this person that stuck that little piece of agar in there. And then, I mean, I would much prefer, so the person that sent me, they sent me little pieces that were maybe about a quarter inch or maybe half inch long. And I put them out 
very gently on agar. And so if there's one part, maybe that's a little bit contaminated with bacteria, like that'll be maybe isolated. So you can pull, um, they all looked really good, but going straight to LC from a micro tube, I don't think that would be a great idea, to be honest. I know, I know people want to make LC and I, I know you probably want to sell it. Like you want to make a bunch of LC and then resell it. Um, I have, again, some ethical considerations there. If you've never grown an actual fruit, so if you're getting microtubes and then you're making LC, I would assume that you want to sell that LC because there's no real reason why you would make LC straight from a microtube unless you wanted to sell it. Because nobody in their right mind would risk, like if you're going to make 300 milliliters of LC and use that to knock up like 300 pounds of grain. Like, I don't think anybody would make that, that take that risk. So I'm not sure why you go from micro tube to LC plus anybody who was in it to just grow that culture for like personal use would probably do it on agar plates because they want to have the culture. They don't want to just have LC. Like most people like to see the culture so you can make sure that it's growing properly and you know, there's nothing weird happening. Um, <laughs> so, hell yeah. Is your wife uh, banning you from this room? That's so sad. Uh, what do you think about full sins? I don't know who full send is. Yeah, and I, I think I heard of full send and I think he's got YouTube videos or something. I'm not really sure who he does or what he does, or even if it's a he. Yeah, you need a wife change that. <laughs> Jedi, that's what I was going to suggest too, but I want to <laughs> change, change the wife. Don't change the hobby. <laughs> uh, Jedi, break it down. I think you're talking about the mono thing. I'm just not up for it right now. Uh, I, I like yeah, we're going into four hours here. I'm not going to start trying to describe monocarry on matings right now um, because a lot of people won't have uh, the background. If you have a specific question, I can I can ask you, but I'm not going to. I'd I'd have to get out a whiteboard and stuff like that. I'm just not uh, not up for it right now. Do, 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 do. Yeah, the, I'm not sure why people want to skip. Agar. Agar is so important in mycology. Um, I don't know why people all of a sudden they want to go straight to LC. You guys, LC is for like large, large mass inoculations. And if you're ever going to inoculate with LC, you want to make sure it's clean. So going like, if you just have like three or 500 milliliters of LC and you're going to inoculate hundreds of pounds of grain, you would really, really, really want to make damn sure that's clean LC. And so I would test it. I would not only take the, the micro food tube and grow out the agar, but the LC I got from the agar piece, I would test that LC again back on another agar plate before I knocked up like 100 pounds of grain. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Again, I don't know why people are skipping the agar part. Yes, not a ship everywhere. Do, 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 do. Yes, you have to do a Q. Yeah, definitely do a QC play, man. I don't I don't know why you would skip that step. Do, 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 do. Yeah, exactly. Yes, Alexander. Yeah, agar is, is is just uh you should learn to like agar. <laughs> It's the only way if you're ever going to do anything related to monocarians or breeding or any kind of isolating, like cloning or getting a new phenotype or anything, you have to do agar. You have to. It's just like skipping agar is just, just like, I don't really understand where that's coming from. Um, even if you have to buy agar plates from somebody, learn how to pour your own agar. Like somebody was saying, you can get away with it maybe in the microwave. Um, I wouldn't suggest it, but at least practice. Agar's cheap. I mean, all you got to do is really mix, like, uh, you know, corn syrup yeast and, like, some agar. Just play with it. It's just fun. You can, like, poke your fingers in it and stuff. 
see what kind of weird stuff is growing on your finger, you know? Be like a street plate with your finger. Yeah, like, Craig, what you're saying about LC, yeah, it's easier to contaminate. And it's like, I, that's again, that's why it makes me really nervous when people are just immediately talking about jumping to LC. You're not, you're missing like a valuable learning experience. And you're also like taking some huge risks if you're going to go to a big grow and you're not, if you don't know how to work with agar, you should not be going to like, if you're tuck, if you're going to make like a hundred monotubs of spawn worth of grain, you know, like you should, you should know how to do agar. Like, yes, said cheese, LC, you just put it. Yeah. I just keep it at room temperature. I've pulled stuff out. That's like a year old. Um, it's not, it's uh, but yeah, store it in the fridge if you're worried about it. I'm doing good. I'm not sure what are my first day card. I don't remember what a first day card. Yeah, 3D print. Yeah, electrophoretic gels. They usually use agar roast though, or polyacrylamide. Um, the agar we use is, is slightly different. Um, I can't remember. Agar roast is. I think it's more cross linked in our agar so it's like tends to be firmer i remember i used to do like northern blots and uh and some western blots once in a while and yeah we used to do polyacrylamide or agarose i don't know why i think maybe agar melts agarose i think has a higher melting temperature too i don't remember exactly why uh why we used it but that was what we used agarose and uh, polyacrylamide <laughs> There's only fan for agar. Uh, you can do that, PQ Michael. <laughs> are you so? Are you very familiar with only fans? I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> Isn't there some art of agar or something like that? A Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, Corey. Like you saying, the K cups, ketchup cups. Um, yeah, you know, try a microwave, try an SAB, try K cups. It's it's not that expensive to get into agar. Um, and they're like, if you want, you know, try throwing some antibiotics in there if you want, you know, try throwing some peroxide in there if you want. There's a bunch of crap you can do with agar that is uh it's just fun. It's pretty cheap too. Like it's not like I don't know why people like seem to think like agar is like, no, oh, it's expensive. It's not, it's cheap. Buy it at the Asian food store. I just saw it at my 7 Eleven. Like, I just went to buy some eggs and some, I don't know, some, some bologna or some shit at the 7 Eleven, and they had egg art like at the 7 Eleven. That's here in Thailand, though, because they use it for desserts. Um, it's just like a gelling agent for, for all kinds of little, like, uh, Kno Chan and Kno Wan or something like that. Little, like, jelly things. It's like jello. It's like the same type of thing as jello, like, you know, jello gelatin, but it's like not animal. Did you, you guys can work on that only fans. I mean, it's a good thing we can't show images here because I'm sure you guys would be coming up with some. But, uh, <laughs> okay, we just have to just figure if the microdigs need to come. Yeah, Weavis, um, yeah, reputable source. I don't know. Again, how do you how can you judge a reputable source? And also ooh, I'm not sure why you're in such a big hurry to get to LC. That's the thing that makes me wonder if you if you know if you know how to do agar because this is as somebody who's worked with agar and has a lot, a lot of people have commented, if you've worked with agar 
you probably wouldn't be asking the question, can I just dump this microtube into LC? Because nobody who's worked with agar has would probably ever do that. They would see a for sure on agar if that reputable source is not only is it reputable, is it contaminated, but they also want the culture. So if you're going to pay for the microtube and then just dump it into LC, what if your LC contaminates? Then you you don't have the culture anymore. Um, but I know now there's people selling like microtubes for like five dollars and stuff. Uh, again, I don't know, man. Uh, is that a reputable source? Somebody said, I don't know. Who knows? That's the way this thing is going, right? So. <laughs> Spore to grain. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. MSS to grain, not a good idea. Um, we Like we were talking about earlier, the people that are selling those uh, all-in-one bags and the grain bags, they want you to buy their grain bags and they want you to fail. And anybody who's worked with agar would probably never, ever, ever even consider taking a multi-spore and shooting it into a grain bag. That They would never do that, ever. So again, they're trying to make that, they're trying to make it seem like agar is obsolete. Agar, they're making it seem like you don't need to do agar. That's not true. Like agar is a very important integral part of the mycology process. Um, it's, it's, an, it's like integral to the whole microbiology and mycology. It's just, just like a, uh, unavoidable, like you're going to have to do it at some point. Five pack on Amazon for 10 bucks. Agar, agar is pretty darn cheap. And the, it's a little packet, like 25 grams or something, but you could make, got like, you know, that's like a lot of plates. I don't know, like, uh, I forgot what it's 2%. So it's going to be, yeah, that's like two and a half liters, which is like a hundred plates or something like that. Like that's about a hundred Petri plates. Um, I don't know how many, it'd be a lot of cake cups for, yeah, like a few bucks. Do, 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 have you ever thought about a Patreon? No, I show pretty much everything. Have you, you boozer, have you like not seen my YouTube? I pretty much show everything. <laughs> you should, you should check out my YouTube videos. Like there's not left, uh, there's not much left to the imagination. I don't like a Patreon. I know all the people that were going to Patreon. Number one, I don't want to charge people money. And number two, if I can show stuff on YouTube, YouTube that I don't even think I've ever been on Patreon. I may have checked it like from some link or something, but uh, I'm not interested in charging people and I'm not interested in putting stuff on there that I can show on YouTube, which is, seems to be pretty much everything. Uh, so I don't, know, I don't have any interest in a, in a Patreon. Do you do do? Yeah, DKC you guys that just get genetics from people like people like sell uh, they they like send you stuff, trade you stuff, or whatever. I, I know a lot of people have approached me about these these people that are. Um, more interested in making money and they'll be like i want every one of your genetics and it's like uh no because you're not the right kind of person i don't like you kind of people the only reason you want to like all these genetics is some kind of this business mentality of like now that i have all your stuff you know they make you obsolete like oh like i don't that's what business people do they get all your ideas and all your information and your techniques and then you become refuse garbage to them they don't need you anymore that's all business people do they use people and then they throw them away when they're no longer serving a purpose so. 
Uh, Jack Frost, no. Jack Frost has translucent spores. They probably do drop spores, but you're not going to see a print. Um, Jack Frost, you need to swab it. Anything uh, that's got uh, that's a true albino or has uh, translucent or hyaline clear spores, um, they need to be swabbed. LC, of course. Yeah, exactly like Peaky, uh, Peaky Michael was saying there. Um, I just realized yeah, my eyes are getting, getting harder for me to read the name. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if you're, you know, you're dumping like unknown agar pieces into LC. You're, <laughs> I just don't, I don't like Hell, be to be honest. Do, 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 do. That's a, that's how you do it, of course, right? You inoculate LC with agar, but um, just dumping a random piece of agar you just got out of a micro tube in that you got in the mail. <laughs> Seems like you're skipping a few steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, geez, Jack Frost has transparent spores. Transparent, translucent, pile and clear, whatever you want to use. <laughs> the, you can't see them in a print. I tried printing some before. I don't remember Jack Frost, but another albino. One. I tried to get a print and then like scrape up some of the spores. And the, the problem is there's some mutation where the, this little thing is called a hyalur appendage that's on the, on the sterigmata. There's like a little sort of eject mechanism. There's something wrong with it genetically. So they may just drop spores, but um, actually normally spores are forced. They're called ballistospores. They're actually kind of shot off, kind of like a, you know, like a catapult kind of thing. Uh, but there's been something with those albino mutations. Something's happened to where they don't shoot off those spores. They just kind of hang on the sterigmata there. And so you got to come and like swab them up. Can you clean it with the cuts or with? Why? <laughs> Can you clean it liquid culture with F dish soap in a centrifuge? I don't know what that means. Old trip. You're talking about cleaning up liquid culture? No. Once it gets bacteria in it, liquid culture is done. I did, and I don't know how I did this. Me, me and Peaky actually, we got what the hell was it? Shit, what was it? It was a Melmac thick penis, I think. Oh, it might have been actually a Jack Frost. Ah, it was one we got. We got some LC, and uh, it was just contaminated with bacteria. And somehow I managed, after I put it on a plate, and then I let it grow out, and a little piece of mycelium popped out. I think it was a Jack Frost. And uh, a little piece popped out, and then I subcultured that, and I eventually managed to get a tiny 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 little piece of mycelium out of this whole contaminated 10 cc like syringe and i managed somehow but it took like months like cleaning up liquid culture is not something you want to do which is why everybody uses agar like that's it the the point of using agar is you can cut pieces that are good away from contaminated pieces if you just chuck a little tiny piece of agar into a LC, like the whole thing's gone. Like everything's gone. There's no like isolating part of it that's clean or anything like that. It's just like it's fucked. Uh, and they always come for like five minutes of doing spores in those bags. Oh, Craig, are you talking about grow bags? I don't know. I haven't grown a lot of stuff in grow bags. And then so I'm not really sure. Do, 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 pump sharing. Oh, somebody you take advantage of. Yeah, really, man, that, yeah, genetics, you know, sharing genetics, it's an issue. Like somebody's always going to, like I, I was selling, you know, I, I was giving away some of my crosses. I, I gave some to my Kokiki and he distributed them to different people. And then uh, not only, not only do they sell your genetics, like the original swabs that I made, they were selling those. <clears throat> like they didn't even put on an agar. They weren't selling cultures. They were selling the literal like identical swabs that I had sent. <laughs> and then somebody else, uh, they'll steal your pictures. Yeah. And uh, Peaky, she's familiar with this. 
somebody, I think she, she'll be okay to tell this story. Like somebody was selling things here online and they were using her beautiful pictures <laughs> that actually had, if I'm, I can't remember, but they had her watermark on them. <laughs> well, maybe they had obscured the watermark. <laughs> so people will steal anything. They'll, uh, yeah, they'll steal your pictures. They'll steal your genetics. If you're lucky, they'll just steal your genetics. And, and if you're unlucky, they'll give it a new name. And then so you're completely erased from the history of that cultigen. People are wonderful. Anytime there's money to be made, you can guarantee somebody's going to figure out a way to take advantage of somebody else. Yeah, Pokemon. I never actually played Pokemon. I was Magic the Gathering. But I, I didn't play it that much. I just played with my boss at work. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Drew, there's legit agar recipes. Just type in agar recipes into Google. You'll find like 10,000 pages of agar recipes. Uh, most of the Facebook groups uh, have like a little, uh, like some kind of mark tag. What do they call it? Like a little tag post at the top. It'll have tons of recipes. Oh, yeah, just type it in now. So MEA. So just type in MEA, malt extract dagger, um, or PDA, then, then then that'll start you. There'll be like 50 other recipes. But any any kind of agar recipe that has more than like three or four ingredients, ignore it. Like you'll see literally like they'll be putting shit like V8 and charcoal and antibiotics and dog food. <laughs> like people get really creative. Um, and they probably work, but there's no reason to use most of them. Just type in MEA, Malt Extract Dagger, and you'll find a whole list of things. Or just go on to any of the Facebook groups and ask somebody. They'll direct you to a, or the Discord. Most of the Discord servers, they have a little tab that says Agar. I'm sure if you just ask there, somebody will send you a list of their 50 that they use. Uh, so you yeah, quite... The, the subreddit thing, I don't even know Reddit. Subreddit, Uncle Ben thinks. I don't even, I don't even know. I, I like, just don't even bother paying attention to that stuff. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Edgar is like meditation for me. I actually like, I kind of like, um, I like doing Edgar. <laughs> it's, <laughs> ah, micro Jesus. Yeah, I'll start dosing all the followers here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, hell, Billy, you got to get a PC at some point. The Uncle Ben's thing is like great if you have ready access to LC, but. If you're going to do it, like, that should just be like a very, very beginning stepping stone. The problem is like Uncle Ben's bags, there's not that much grain in them. Like once you get past like wanting to grow like two or three cultigens, you're going to want different, different, you're going to want a lot more grain, basically. You, you just want more grain and Uncle Ben's bags get expensive unless you're buying them EBT or food stamps or whatever. Uh... Drive Jack Frost, can I do it without? I don't know what that means, Drew. I have Jack Frost, can I do it without a flow hood? Have a SEB. I don't know what that means. SAB? I'm thinking you're, we would have a SAB. You have a SAB. SAB stands for still airbox. So if you have a SAB, a, a SAB, yeah, you can do anything in a SAB. It's just a lot slower and more like annoying. Like because you got to put your hands. There's different designs, but it's just it's just harder. It's just hard to do things because you're looking and things are farther away. I don't like them, but I have access to a fan flow unit. So a FFU. Just look for a cheap FFU if you're really gonna get into it. I think they're they're coming down to like four or five hundred dollars now in the US. Uh we got them here for 300 or 350 I reckon it would be about US 300 maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> did you did you well you get a part-time job yeah I should. <laughs> it's a bit getting a bit ridiculous oh 
Let's go for five hours, you guys. I can feel my voice starting to give out, actually, and I don't want to drink a bunch of a bunch of beverages because it'll mean i uh, it's got maybe Coke and I'll be up till like six in the morning. Do, do, do. Stephanie, you got to go to the top when you go to the notifications. You got to go all the way up to the top. I just figured this out like a couple of weeks ago too. There's like a, there's actually four um, notifications. You got to go up to the one. It says something like personalized or something like that. The very top, but the default one, it says get notifications. And then there's like another one above it. It's like a black bell, I think. So the one's just like a bell and the other one's like a black bell. And it says something like get all notifications or something. Old trip. Yeah. You can go 10 times faster in a liquid. Uh, contamination also grows 10 times faster in a liquid. Oh, and I'm not sure why you're like, if you're in, it, in this hobby to go fast, it's not, it's not gonna, I don't think it's a good way to look at it. Um, this hobby is not about fast and speed. And if you're trying to make money, I don't know, it's up to you. But 10, when people use phrases like 10 times faster, that usually it's somebody who's interested in making money. Um, but I don't know, to each their own, I guess. Do, 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 yeah, pictures. You guys should start a, a petition or something. You can like sue the internet. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, you can't do that much about it. That's the problem, right? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, Andy, there. This is that the recipe I might have sent to you. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's an agar recipe for you, Andy. The sticky rice powder. I didn't realize that people in the US, I forgot people call it glutinous rice so if you go to the asian food store you get a look it's called sticky in thai it's called like uh like cow neo it's a it means like sticky and like but i forgot it's it's actually called glutinous rice by most like westerners which also means like sticky it's just if you say glutinous rice like it sounds weird i guess <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know, I gotta look at it. I don't even know. I think it was up to like 10 or 12 pages. I didn't even look. Something like 20 mil LME for, yes, yes. You leave 20, not milligrams, grams. 20 grams of LME, not 20 milligrams. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, hello, and just maybe that's potatoes. Yeah, you know what you can do is just boil potatoes, keep the water, and uh, put, I would put maybe a little bit of corn syrup in there or some yeast, just something else, because just potatoes, the, it seems like the, the mycelium, they don't grow very well. Maybe put just like, so if you're making 500 mils, if you put like your potato water, and then say, I don't know, maybe like two or three grams of, of some kind of sugar, maybe corn syrup. And if you've got like baker's yeast, throw in like maybe a half gram of that and uh and then your um, yeah your two percent agar so for 500 ml that would be like 10 grams of agar so yeah that's a, it's easy um, yeah i was going to use pretty much the same mana agar for like two percent which for uh 500 500 milliliters that's going to be 10 grams now, King, it's a, uh, it's not legal here. Do, do, do. Uh, but you can freely purchase things. <laughs> it's just because it's not legal. But they don't like put up signs. That, uh, well, they do actually. They say like you know, happy shakes or whatever. If you're at the beaches and stuff, but in Bangkok, you're gonna have to ask the right person. Yeah, hillbilly, the, the Uncle Ben's bag. That's why I don't know. I was a little confused at first. I'm like, that's such a small amount of spawn. I, I was wondering, like, why people would, like, use them, unless you can buy them cheaply with government assistance, food stamps, or money, or EBT, or whatever it's called. 
do, 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 It's down wolf, don't worry. It, it'll go up on YouTube after it's... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we made any groundbreaking discoveries or anything, but it seems like a pretty good one. I can't believe I've been talking for almost five hours. That's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but I can tell my eyes reading the, um, reading the comments that my eyes are starting to get a little bit fuzzy. Let's see, I grind brown rice, yeah. Any brown rice and a coffee grinder. Yeah, you can use it for your media or you can use it for a BRF, like a PF tech. That's a, that's a good one. If you guys want to use your multi-spore syringes, uh, look up PF Tech. There's, I think it's um, uh, the one of the, the let's see, what is the, the, I can never remember this guy's name, Tony from Fresh. Yeah, I'm getting confused. Gary and the, um, I'm getting confused. Here you go. Yeah, this, this guy here, I'll find you though. If you want to use brown rice flour and um, this is what's called the peak, go check out this YouTube video. He does a good job. He goes through the whole PF tech and yes, yeah, brown rice. Uh, he, he starts off, he's using a multi-sport syringe. So in order to do the PF tech or the BRF, the brown rice flour tech, you have to grind brown, grind brown rice. Um, so you grind up into a powder and you use, uh, you take vermiculite, basically bigger vermiculite, like quarter inch, half inch size. And you basically like kind of mix it up. Like you're making like powdered, powdered donuts. If you ever like, you know, put, put uh, icing on donuts, like powdered sugar, um, you do it like that. And then you, you can sterilize that in a, in a steamer. Like you don't need a pressure cooker. So the brown rice flour cakes are, and there's a few other things. So go through that video, but that's a great way to start. Like a really, really cheap way. You buy a $10 multi-spore syringe, and then you can do a pheno height. You can get a clone. And by that point, you'll want to do agar. And, uh, yeah. do, 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 Andy, the metric system, I've tried. Uh, I try to use a metric system, but I'm sorry, but Americans just don't know what the metric system is, most of them. So it's something I've had to deal with my whole life. <laughs> I love talking about mushrooms. Uh, you boozer, somebody asked about peat moss earlier. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking about maybe ending this soon. Yeah, it's, I, I, we're starting to get the same mul the same questions multiple times. I know it's probably people that are coming in late, but it's it's probably the same. Um, it's maybe people left and new people are coming. Uh, but we talked about peat moss already. Uh, peat moss is not a very environmentally friendly these days. It's also expensive where I live, so I don't use it. I have many, many times. The first time I used um, peat moss was, yeah, when I first grew cubes like 30 years ago. Um, peat moss was the standard, uh, I guess, substrate. Uh, so it basically used it like we used to, like we used corn. And that was back when you had to, you had like a separate substrate and a separate casing. I think the first time I did it, I actually just, I cased uh, rye, rye grains. Like I didn't use any like coir or anything. I just literally took like a hundred percent grain spawn and I cased that with, with uh, peat moss, what would be called casing. And I mixed like, yeah, with peat moss and some other stuff, some recipe from Paul Stamets books, I don't remember. <clears throat> what exactly I did, but <clears throat> spend Boris grain at, yeah, I did, um, ice machine. I, I thought about that. Um, I don't know how good it would be though, because Brewer's grain is going to be depleted of all the simple carbohydrates because that's what the beer, the yeast have already eaten. So you're going to end up with something that's mostly fiber. Like, I don't know if there'll be very many digestible, like sugars or carbohydrates in spent grain. There might be, I've never used it. If you've got a cheap source of it, you might try. The other thing I would reckon it's been cooked for so long because the way they, they, um, the way they cook grain, 
or, or they mix like malt with the malted um, grains to to do the um, to do the malting process, or the 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 process what is called they got fancy words where they make the mash. <clears throat> those those grains that they've used they've been cooked for quite a long time, so they're probably going to be really soft and mushy. I don't think they would make very good grain spawn, if that's what you mean. Using spent brewer's grain for grain spawn, I don't. It's probably not going to work very well. They're probably going to be really, really soft, I would think, and they're going to have quite low carbohydrates and available sugar. So, I don't think it would work that great unless you have a massive free source of spent brewer's grain. I would not put spent grain into a substrate recipe. That's just asking for contamination. I like the headway from here that long. DVD, Pete Moss works. That's not on par of Coco Core. Yeah. Um, I kind of don't honestly know what how I use Pete Moss, if it was part of the substrate or it was just for the casing. I just I don't remember. It's been so long. I don't remember. I know I used to use it, but it's quite cheap back in Michigan and uh it's not here. <laughs> so it's, it's not something I would even consider using because here it's like prohibitively expensive like a little tiny bag like this is like three dollars get in the normal up here daily if i very um yeah we tried h town well we tried making an outdoor bed a couple of months ago down at my friend's house but it was it, it gets into like it pushes 100 over 100 here it, it, it wasn't really we got like maybe i must have buried all my spent I probably buried about 10 spent shoe boxes. I think about six mushrooms popped up, like tiny, ugly looking mushrooms. Um, you can try, but if you don't, if it's too hot, if you're like in Oklahoma or Arizona or something and you're preparing spent cakes in your front yard that gets full sun all day, like not gonna probably do anything. I'd use them for compost. <laughs> They would uh, eat the snails and squirrels. Don't eat it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. I think I told the story last time. Though, not only did we get a few mushrooms, but for the pretty much the top inch and a half of that, we buried it. Any grains that were sticking out were the birds, the local birds, like found them and they started to basically dissect our little uh, our little mushroom bed. So, so I don't know how much spawn was left there by the time the squirrels got done with it. And the other birds, they were birds. <laughs> that snails probably too. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm from Michigan, Boozer. That's where, when I was living in Ann Arbor, that's where that's where I would have been when I used peat moss. Uh, yeah, that could be an issue. Maybe in Michigan, peat moss would be cheaper than quar. I don't know. I have no idea what the price is for choir now, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I know here it's cheap here because it's domestically produced here. I just, uh, I had no idea in Michigan what a brick of choir costs. Uh, Corey, do you have a Joe's or use them forever? Like glass jars? No, I use them forever. No, Corey, if you are getting contamination from your jars, it may be the rings or the lids. Or it could be that you're not washing them well. Um, probably you're not PCing long enough. It's not from prior contamination because if you're PCing your spawn, your, you know, your grain that you're going to use for spawn, if you're PCing, pressure cooking it long enough, it should kill any contamination that's on those jars. So, yeah, there's something wrong with your PC cycle. It's not the jar. If there's no visible, like it's a glass jar, right? Assuming it's a glass mason jar. If you're using a glass mason jar and you're getting contamination, that's not from the jar. That's from maybe the rings or the lids, or more than likely, it's like you're not pressure cooking properly. You need a pressure cooker if you're not doing it at least two hours, which most people seem to be in agreement. I'd do three. If you're only doing like 90 minutes, an hour and a half of pressure cooking, that's why you're getting contamination. It's not because of your jars. Do, 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 do. See a quick 
Okay, okay, and do, 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 do. There is a heat dome here in Texas. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Texas might not be the best place for an outdoor cube garden. <laughs> yeah, Corey, you probably, you might be, there's something wrong with your drain. Like, I occasionally, over here, we occasionally get millet that is just such bad quality. There's, like, nothing you can do to it to, like, make it work. Um, I've also had trouble occasionally um, with, uh, you know, the, with the, like, lower quality, like, drains from the food store, uh, the like, the pet supply store, like, the bird store. Sometimes they sell weird things like oats and wheat here at the bird food store. And, uh, yeah probably your bad brain or you're not PCing long enough that's I would guess that's more of the case you're just not PCing long enough uh, and that could be also you're not maybe you're not hydrating your grains long enough like if you've got oats and they're not the inside of the grain is not getting hydrated when you cook it um, again it, this goes back to like are you doing some weird flash prep shit for your brain your grain like flash prep for something like oats is probably a bad idea. But I know again, like people are, they want to hurry, hurry, hurry. So I see everything is like flash prep this, tech this, shortcut this. It's like, you should make sure your, your grains are fully hydrated, i.e. you boil them for an extended period of time. Nope, I'm not into subtropicalis yet. Um, there's a lot of other people that are really, really into the exotics, if you want to call them that. I'm not so much interested in, in the exotics. I'm, I'm really like, I was saying earlier, I'm in this to like teach as many possible people as I can or help them to grow your standard cube. I'm not really into like growing, you know, Mexicanas or like subtropicalises or, you know, weird like gymnopolis or whatever like i just don't i not really don't think that's 95 percent of the people who are gonna get into this hobby want to grow cubensis and if i can teach them how to do that they can figure out how to do the other stuff later so uh i i really i don't know again this goes back to things that were happening 20 years ago people come up with a new greatest species or the newest cross or the newest hybrid or the newest tech or the newest whatever. And it's always is a way to sell you more stuff. So I, I know I went, I went through it myself, SporeWorks 20 years ago. I ordered like everything that wasn't a cube. I went to the SporeWorks website. I ordered every one of them. And <clears throat> then I ended up with like 15 different things. And the guy sent me like, another 15 for free and i didn't know what to do with any of them i was just like oh i got all of this stuff that i don't know how to grow doesn't grow well in agar spores don't germinate i just i was just like why did i do this why did i even know so yeah <clears throat> if you want to get into the subtropicalis i'm sure um there are a lot of people out there that would would probably be willing to give you advice. I just don't have any, no, not yet. Maybe in a year, maybe in six months, maybe never, because I don't know. I'm not super interested in the exotics or whatever, as people call them these days. So, yeah, Corey, that, that's the other thing. Yeah, storing grain, if it gets wet, I know, you know, if grain gets wet, I've had that problem too, where you get a bag sitting somewhere if it's on a cold floor and it attracts condensation and the grain gets wet and you don't even realize that the grain is already starting to mold or it's starting to germinate or something has gone wrong and you, you don't realize it can be, be that too. Okay, you guys. Well, I uh, I'm gonna. I think these questions are slowing down. I'm getting tired. You can see my eyes even in the camera are starting to get a little bit droopy. And more importantly, I gotta pee again. <laughs> so I'm gonna call it a night, you guys. And 
I guess without any further ado, hope you guys um, learned something. And I will talk to you all later. <laughs> bye bye. See you. It's hopefully going to go up on YouTube after this. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye.